Welcome to Fire Breathing Kittens, an actual play podcast. Every episode microplot is a complete adventure with a beginning and an end that fits into the overarching macro plot of the whole season. Because they stand sturdily on their own, you can listen to these adventures in any order and can skip any you don't enjoy. Today, we are playing using the combat mechanics from a game called Spectres and Spurs. It's our first time playing, so we are basically guaranteed to make some mistakes. <laughs> But if you enjoy these mechanics in general, you can find Spectres and Spurs on tintentsher.itch.io slash Spectres hyphen Spurs. Build your own Spectres and Spurs character and play a game with friends. Speaking of friends, today we are joined by Avarice H. Hello, y'all. My name is Avarice H, but you can call me Ava. And um, in case you couldn't tell, I'm a Cambian. So, um... Ava has uh, has white hair that is currently dyed black. Um, she has purple skin, which is probably the first thing you notice, and a big pair of black and crimson wings. And she is dressed in a very cowgirl goth sort of aesthetic. Um, she used to have a sword at her waist, but that's been replaced by just a knife. And she's got um, a couple of dragons with her. They're very small dragons, pocket-sized, if you will. And they're just chilling on her shoulder or hiding under her wings. Yep, you'll probably get to see more of them later. <laughs> yeah, Penny and Malum, right? Yep, Penny yeah. is the black one and Malum is the colorful stained glass one. Yeah, and Rain Ilvaby. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am a five foot two human looking woman <laughs> uh, with slightly tan skin and um, dirty ash blonde hair. <laughs> and what you would probably notice first as a very defining feature would be uh, the scar over my left eye, which has rendered it unusable. <laughs> and I always wear some kind of uh, head garment, usually a head scarf. And apart from that, I am clad in normal adventurous clothes and I am very human looking, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And and later in the episode we will be joined by Olitha Sweet. Alright. The game Spectres and Spurs encourages game masters to start off with a hook to catch your attention. So I've got a prequel for you all. This hook is a lot longer than my normal intro, so I apologize a bit, but it is an interesting Spectres and Spurs specific TTRPG style to try. Let's experiment together. The hook is that I'll tell you what happened yesterday and what happened last night. Build some tension. Let you, the players, know about some potential danger. Is that all right? Yeah, totally. Great. Here is what happened yesterday. Pickles, the mink bird, was flying along in search of food as always. It had found its way into Utop Field, a vast plain of grass and wheat farms. Pickles' eyes widened, like a pigeon's, at the delicious bait it saw, its tiny brain not understanding that the metal frame around the bait was a live capture trap. Snap! Pickles, the little mink bird, was captured. After being startled a bit, Pickles happily chewed away at the food, not noticing that he'd incurred a slight scratch. Being a mink bird, he had been larger framed than your average pigeon. Imagine a mink's body with pigeon wings over the ribcage. This trap snapped shut on his poor little mink back foot and tail, which caused a mild scratch. Pickles, now consuming the bait, didn't notice at all and wasn't injured too badly, don't worry. <laughs> but drip, drip, drip went blood from the scratch. A man came and bent down over the trap picked up the cage with pickles, and looked inside at what he had captured. What are you? He asked Pickles the mink bird. Pickles looked back at him, not a thought in his blank, adorable eyes. The man smiled and carried the cage away. He offered Pickles a bit of food through the cage bars, and Pickles the mink bird was delighted. Neither noticed the small trail of blood droplets that led from the trap to the man's destination. Zooming out, in the background overhead, the man walked towards an amusement park ride's frame catching the last rays of the setting sun. 
thanks to Pickles, a blood trail led right to it. That is what happened yesterday. Oh, and you guys will uh, tell Olathe about that later. Yeah? Okay. (laughs) Yeah. You ready for what happened last night? Go for it. (laughs) Okay. This is what happened last night. Last night was dark. (laughs) It was quiet. (laughs) Just the rustling sound of tall grasses in Utah Field west of Nicomoy. A camper slept in their tent. Serene, at peace, deeply resting. No one was keeping watch. There were no lights or alarms as the thing approached. Rattle, 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 like beads of a necklace bumping together. A sound like beads going clack, clack, clack. The camper did not stir. Their soft exhalation puffed out air, evidence of life. I won't get too graphic, but the scene fades to black with the camper's screams. The last sound we hear is slurp, 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 gulp. After drinking, something searched, quested, and smelled a bit more blood, a delicious trail for it to follow. So there's your hook. (laughs) That rattling sound exists somewhere in this adventure. If you explore and find clues, you might be prepared when you encounter it. Everybody got it? I'm hooked. (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> great but we're not there yet where are you guys you party are standing in line in front of a ticket gate it's early in the morning and you're waiting outside a brand new tourist destination in Utah field this is a fenced in tickets required themed village with shopping restaurants and even a few rides You all know each other from working for the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild, and as a group decided to meet up here to enjoy a fun shopping day at the amazing new amusement park destination, Sanguilla. Ava, this is convenient for you, because your dad's here in Sanguilla for work, so you've arranged a coffee shop chat with him at 10 a.m. Olathe uh, is going to join you later, because she is looking forward to a fun shopping opportunity. She's got her eye out for cool bows and arrows. And Rain, traveling with strong party members, makes you feel more confident. So, everyone, are you morning people as you squint in the early sun standing in line outside the front gate to Sanguila? Sure, I'm a morning person if I've had my coffee. (laughs) The sun's awake, so I'm awake. (laughs) Yeah, I'll, um, I'll I'll take my coffee black, please. No sugar, no cream, no nothing. Just the darkest, um, darkest rose you got. <laughs> All right, so one of you is holding a cup of Joe, and the other one is, like, squinting up at the sky. Fidgeting. And <laughs> after handing over their gold to receive a wristband, people have been heading into little privacy booths for a few minutes before entering the park. Hmm, that's odd. And it's taking a few minutes. You rifle through your bag as you stand in line before the arch that in red letters on a black background proclaims, Sanguila. What would you have packed with you to bring today? Probably animal food, as usual. Just in like one of the pouches uh, around her belt. And some uh, herbs she maybe picked up along the way. Stuff like that you could like use to disinfect and things like that. Or stuff that just smelled nice. <laughs> oh, and money, probably, if, if she anticipated having to buy a ticket. Yeah. I, I've got lots of um, little shiny trinkets made of just pure metals and gems. And some of them I display on me so that um, if someone's dumb enough to rob me, they're going to get caught. <laughs> But yeah, the, like those little things are actually for, uh, <laughs> you, you, you'll, you see, um, Rain, like she, she takes out like a little ring or something and just hands it to her little stainless dragon. and he snaps it out of her fingers and eats it. <laughs> <laughs> so you also have animal food with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. And then I got some, like some, uh, jerky, I guess for Penny. I mean, Penny eats anything, honestly, except for what Malam eats, she doesn't eat that. <laughs> 
<laughs> so they never compete for food. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right. Uh, players, please write down the following four locations. Imagine that this is your park map. You can go to any of these destinations today to look for clues and explore the story. The person who plays Lothario thought of these names. The four locations are Unholy Grounds, Coffee Shop. Perfect. <laughs> it's right up my alley. <laughs> Bloodhounds and more, Pet Shop. You guys good? They are nodding. It does not convey. <laughs> the company executive offices. Okay, up where all the embezzling goes down. <laughs> Time to turn into a wolf again. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, the weapons shop called High Stakes Weapons and Sundries. Stakes is stakes. <laughs> Vampire stakes. Oh, perfect. <laughs> and just to let you know, there's some events that can only be triggered after you've been to one location. Then you go to another, so you can like go there, and then you don't get the event trigger. I've made a game. <laughs> but first, let's get through the front gate. The line is a bit slow because people have been stopping in at privacy booths before entering the park, but you're finally at the front. Withered, spooky plants, dried, crunchy looking, guide you to an automated teller booth. It's a box with a slot for coins ready to accept your gold. Is that, like, outside of the privacy booth, or is it, like, in the privacy booth? Uh, you're standing in front of a person-sized automated teller machine that has a space for coins in it. There's, like, a metal rotating admissions... What do they call those things, actually? It's, like, waist height, and it's got, like, metal prongs coming off of it, and if you walk through it, it rotates if, you've, if it allows you, and if you aren't allowed, you guess you'd have to hop over it to get in. And beyond that are the booths that people keep going in. Oh, okay. Which is like slowing. Like, it seems that once there's a booth free, then it'll let more people in. And it's like a, a voting booth where no one can see inside it and what is happening there. But people are coming out, which is reassuring. And then, <laughs> and then they are entering into the park. Yeah. Then Rain would probably just throw the money in because that's not as scary. <laughs> Rain throws coins at the slot. <laughs> Make... A check for long distance coin guidance. <laughs> Make your choice of ability check to uh, throw the coin into the ATM question mark. Why not? Inspectors and Spurs to make a check. What she is doing right now is she's rolling 2d6 and adding her modifier to what she rolls. And Inspectors and Spurs on a 7 to 9, it's a mild success. And on a 10 plus, it's like a woo, good job. Okay, I rolled a 4 and a 1. And my iron, no, my dusk would be three. That's an eight. That's a success. Woo! <laughs> the coin arches through the air, rotates a little bit, and you're watching it rotate, being like, oh, no, don't go sideways, don't go sideways, vertical, yes, okay. And then <laughs> it aligns, like the spin aligns with the little hole for the coin. <laughs> oh, and Ava sees that. Hmm, she kind of just like gives Rain a nod and it's just like, impressive. She actually, from her last adventure, she recently acquired this ability to detach her feathers from her wings and move them at will. So she's going to take a coin, use a feather to like float it into the, into the like over to the slot, then drop it in the slot. Nice. <laughs> We're being cool today. <laughs> All the normies behind you are like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the automated teller booth whirs. A wristband falls and slides down onto a tray after each of you give it gold. Yeah, um, I'm going to continue my cool streak and, <laughs> again, use a feather to lift it out and float it to me. <laughs> and then just, like, puts, puts her, uh, she just puts her hand up and then it just falls on, onto it and the feather goes back into her, and her wing. <laughs> and then she just casually walks through, like, not even looking behind her. <laughs> Rain would take it, like, very fast, so kind of, like, if as if it would like snap at you <laughs> if you like keep your hand too long so she would kind of like whoop, like yoink <laughs> and then be kind of like intimidated by the the gate <laughs> that rotates <laughs> but she'd make it through <laughs> we believe in her <laughs> yeah Ava's confidence is helping you feel a little bit more confident right <laughs> probably 
you have walked forward through the rotating entry. What is that thing called? I don't know. Anyway, dry, <laughs> desiccated, crunchy wheat stalks sprout up from the ground in a pathetic, withered, fungus rotten attempt at druidic or ranger magic. But a walkway is a walkway, and you can tell where it's leading you. The walkway ends at a series of booths that each say Park Entry. Donate blood here to enter Sanguilla. Feed a vampire today. Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna like turn to Rain for a second and say, hmm. Very mighty interest in that they're asking for blood. I wonder if that's real or not. You know, when, when I give someone my blood, I make a deal with them. And I take some of their in return. Well, I suppose for you it would be very special then. One of my very close friends is a vampire, but he like tries to not drink blood and is like trying to develop sort of like a blood beat, like a crop that's kind of like blood. Hmm. But I mean, if I give my blood away, then I don't really make a contract with anyone. So if you'd rather not, I guess I could give them two portions. I guess I have a lot of blood for a human. <laughs> Yeah, it works for me. I don't mind. Then they'll have some food. Also, I mean, this whole thing is called sangui la, as in blood. <laughs> so <laughs> she would like attempt to sort of like donate twice. Does it work with like the band? So if you like put the band there, you're like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you approach the booth, it, let's just say an automated curtain opens. <laughs> you can go inside, sensing your band. The setup inside is a standard automated, safe, and medically sterile booth. It seems to be donate what you want. How much blood do you donate, Rain? What's healthy to donate? <laughs> it's, isn't it, is it usually a liter? Or is that too much? No, you have like three liters, right? So it shouldn't be a liter. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely less than a liter that you typically donate. <laughs> I think it's like a half a liter, maybe 300 milliliters is like typical. Uh, it's like you can donate as much or as little as you want. Let's go like <laughs> maybe like three fourths of a liter. <laughs> okay. So like 750 milliliters? Yeah, I kind of like that. So, you know, because like one person would like give a half, I guess, but giving a liter is probably not smart because you just come out the booth and fall over. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> So let's go like 750. <laughs> I'm really impressed. You donate blood. All right, you did it. The dry plant bordered path points the direction to walk to the main park. Some educational signs on this path entertain you as you stroll along this fungus wheat walkway. One sign says For humans, blood donation is typically about 470 mils, which is 8% of the average adult's blood volume. One pint or an eighth of a gallon or 16 fluid ounces. You guys got really close. Like, that's amazing. I'm very <laughs> impressed. And then for the players, this is not for the, the characters, but for the players, George Washington was drained of about two liters of his blood, which is about 40% of, of his blood volume, uh, and then promptly died. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, didn't he die from that? <laughs> yeah. So if you had gone, like, like, with the two liter the initial, I would have been, like... Uh, but yeah, you guys did really good. Weren't they trying to, like, cure his, like, lung disease or, like, lung infection? And then they were like, well, let's get rid of all the humors. And then they, like, drew his blood and then he died from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. Yep. Um, all right. So, welcome to Sanguilla. There are vampire decorations everywhere. Fashionable window mannequins wear red-lined black hoods to advertise a clothing store. There's a rotor ride where you and all your blood are centrifuged to a wall. <laughs> a restaurant sign portrays drawings of dripping strawberry ice cream and red velvet cake. And you've got the locations from earlier. Where are you headed? So I was able to get in too, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> thanks to thanks to Rain's generous donation. <laughs> she's just like she's like feeling very good with herself that like two vampires now get like a bit of a meal. 
like she'd be generally like very excited to be here because it does remind her of her friend Cameron, and it just mm-hmm. like she really likes him, so it just like makes her kind of feel familiar or like she's happy to be here like it's really funny because usually she leaves the guild and like someone drops an apple and she like is she like jumps to the second floor in fear like she's very easily scared and now she's like in this in this con of blood themed everything and she's just like whoa (laughs) that's so cool (laughs) i mean did you already get your 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 joe otherwise we could go to the unholy grounds (laughs) I mean, I could always get a second cup. <laughs> you know, Devil doesn't get to sleep much. She's always got a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for a second cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want one? I, I can get one for you since you basically paid my way into here. Uh, maybe not a coffee, but like a, also not a hot cocoa. Uh, I guess just warm milk. <laughs> warm milk. All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna go up to the like is, is there a line how long is the line there's a building on your way there some educational signs on this path of withered plants entertain you as you stroll along this fungus wheat walkway one sign says cows have 800 blood types <laughs> <laughs> and then you step inside unholy grounds it's dark inside here Red upholstered chairs, candle light illuminating the tables, which are coffin lids. Sitting at one of the tables, looking over some papers, is a slimy looking man with long, greasy, silvery white hair, wearing a sharp ruby red suit jacket and matching dress pants, wide lapels with crisp white pinstripes. He seems focused and doesn't look up from his papers when the door opens. A table away, a dwarf scans the room as you get close, recognizes you, then looks back at a magazine. Um, Mm. while entering, Rain would be mothering, like, What is it? Cocoa and chocolate and grapes and onions, too. But I guess it wouldn't be onions. (laughs) So she's kind of, like, trying to think of a list of some things. Yeah, um, Ava, like, uh, looks around and then, like, immediately notices the, uh, white-haired man, and she kind of, like, sighs, and she's, I guess it's time for that, then. Like, uh, under her breath, to Rain, she says, listen, Rain, I I got some business I gotta take care of here. Um, if you want, you can hang around, or you can go somewhere else. If you go somewhere else, you can take Penny with you. She'll let me know if you get in trouble, and I can find my way there. But, um, yeah, it's up to you, but it's really nothing exciting that I'll be doing here. Just some business. She kind of, like, looks bitter. (laughs) Oh, Rain would, like, try to, like, pat your shoulder and be like, you can do it. (laughs) I guess I could check out maybe the pet shop in the meantime, and you'll just come find me when you're done? Yeah, sure, but but I'll get you your um, warm milk first. Or did you want grapes? I heard you might want something about grapes. No, no, no grapes. Grapes are bad and onions, <laughs> I think. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I, I don't like grapes either. And unless they're made into wine, then I'll like them. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm going to go and um, order, um, I guess, a to-go cup of warm milk. Um, it has to be the best warm milk you have, all right? And... <laughs> I want the darkest roast, the darkest coffee you can. If you have any grinds that are that were burnt, um, you can make coffee with those, and I'll I'll give you I'll give you a tip for it too. <laughs> and no sugar. I, I I can't see you slipping any sugar in there. All right, <laughs> or cream or anything. <laughs> you better curse that cup. <laughs> At the mention of a tip, they're uh, hopping. I mean, it takes a little bit longer than a normal cup, but they make you exactly what you want. It's Perfect. burned. It doesn't have any sugar in it. It's <laughs> slightly viscous. <laughs> um, she, um, she like takes a bit and just like, it's perfect. All right, perfect. And then she, she gives them a pretty uh, big tip because not all the coffee that she drinks is like viscous like that. So <laughs> she'll tip them like, she'll tip them like thirty percent. 
Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Big you, put it, you put it on the table and the smoke kind of makes like a little skull. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to be sending Penny off with Rain to keep an eye on her and kind of let me know if anything's up. <laughs> yeah. All right. And um, yeah. And then once I've got my coffee, I'll mosey on over and just pull up a chair and sit right next to the um, white-haired man. Blythe Horde looks up from his papers. Ava, how good to see my lucky charm. He smiles at you like a used car salesperson. How have you been? Morning, Blythe. Eh, same old, same old. Got lots of business to take care of. How about you? I'm here for work. Yeah, business for me as well. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I wonder. And then she's, she's going to, like, keep her voice low. Have you, have you worked at all with um, Consent Creamery? You, you know about them? <laughs> when I'm gone, a part of it will be yours. You know I have major holdings in it. Ah, that explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, if you guys, listeners, want to listen to Missives from a Corpse, it all started with a small dairy farm a few hundred miles away from Nicomoy. And it all ends somewhere in the future with Orange is the New Goo, with Consent Creamery being like a multi-planet mega corporation. But it starts out <laughs> real nice. Uh, it, what is it called? Sword Rock Cafe? where it starts with uh yeah anyway so consent creamery yeah blythe has shares in that and uh, i think the last thing he said was that he's got his shares in his will going to you if he dies mm, yeah and then uh she says well man i hope that's not happening any, anytime soon do you think that's gonna happen anytime soon looks at him with those red eyes of hers <laughs> narrows them not with my lucky charm here we wouldn't want your mother to have to see me, would we? She's like, she kind of like looks at him, just like, how, <laughs> how does she, uh, how does he, like, um, she just goes like, so, w w what do you mean? And why do you keep calling me your lucky charm? You know, devils bring a lot of bad luck, don't they? I wouldn't say that. I've had some, I mean, so this is a dark elf <laughs> and, and that's a drigger, like a dark dwarf. And you're like a devil cambion thing. Mm -hmm. And he says, everyone else just fools themselves, telling themselves they're good. We're all just people at the end of the day. Yeah, that's that's true. At least we're not pretending. Glancing at the papers on the table before Blythe, your eyes catch the words H2 flow drip irrigation kit. H2 flow. Is that something I would have heard about before? No, your character has no idea what an H2 flow is drip irrigation kit is mm, just gonna just like go like point and a f finger to us like what's that thing new invention or something oh this is for work horrid holdings has never been better i've convinced the former farmers in this town to pay me a small fee to haul away their old farming equipment and dispose of it in an environmentally friendly manner paid to receive it paid to find a buyer for it i win in both directions that's how you do business, Ava. Between you and me, irrigation equipment sales are way up recently. Maybe there's a big buyer driving up market price. I don't know. I'm just enjoying selling it for way more than I normally do. <sighs> All right. Um, so irrigation. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, like she, she knows someone who could be the buyer potentially. Um... <laughs> I mean, uh, th there's a, you, you could try the farm as well at uh, the Nick Mc Community College. Might be able to sell it to someone there. <laughs> and as we zoom out on you hooking up Professor Edmir So with a, a family discount on some very high market priced H2 flow drip irrigation kit. I love that, that Blythe Horde is making like connections with Edmir So through you. Edmir So has the Nick my Community College working farm to irrigate. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Perfect. So we're going to zoom out on that. And you, you can be done in like, I just want to do a two minute little intro with rain and then and then you can join us in the pet shop but um it probably would have 
spend a little bit of time on her own. So, to rain. Some educational signs on this path entertain you as you stroll along this fungus wheat walkway. One sign says, match the color of the blood to the organism. It lists leeches, starfish, crabs, and kitty cats. The color options are clear, green, red, and blue. It's like a, a children's entertainment sign. <laughs> so you walk along. She would get distracted. <laughs> She would guess uh, red for the cat, green for the leech. What were the other options again? Leeches, starfish, crabs, and kitty cats. The color options are clear, green, red, and blue. Starfish blue and crabs clear, maybe. And as you move the color underneath it, it says the right answer. Crabs have blue blood, starfish have clear blood, cats have red blood, and leeches have green blood. (laughs) Speaking of critters, you push open the door... And you're in a pet shop. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) This shop is loud. There are barking bloodhounds, screeching finches, flapping butterflies and bats, aquarium pumps for an aquarium full of lamprey. Perhaps to combat the animal musk, the windows are open and there's a slight breeze. Two small children are ladling blood into a terrarium of leeches. And then I'm going to have all heck break loose right before Ava walks in. So you ready for this? (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) I am ready. (laughs) All right. The children who were ladling blood into a terrarium of leeches walk over to a cage that has a small creature with a minx body, a pair of wings over its rib cage, and a pigeon's head with fluffy, furry, tufted ears. They open the cage to ladle in some blood to the mink bird. The mink bird cocks its head at the bowl of blood, looking at it like, what the heck is that? (laughs) Its wide orange eye takes one look at that blood, one look at the open cage door, and the mink bird is making a break for it. (laughs) In a mad dash of flapping wings and scrambling mink legs, the mink bird soars past the children, bounces off a cage of finches, the cage of finches falls down to the floor, the finch is freaking out, the door (laughs) to the cage busts open, finches are everywhere, now the butterflies are out, the dogs are barking, the air is full of feathers, a bloodhound has loosed its leash, the leash is dragging behind the bloodhound, the leash wraps around the leg of the bat enclosure, the bat enclosure tilts sideways, it crashes to the ground, the bats are free, the next thing you know, half (laughs) the animals in the store have exited via the open windows and Ava steps inside and lets some lets the dog out. <laughs> <laughs> now we know who let the dog out. <laughs> okay, yeah, like um hold up like one, <laughs> one second. The thing is, <laughs> GM, because of the basic bomb that you just unleashed on Ava because of what she now knows that her dad knows, she's going to say, like, she, she's going to realize, like, oh, wait, cause, like, Penny's going to send her, like, a distress signal and she's going to be, like, freeze in the middle of whatever random business nonsense she's talking about. Just be like, okay, listen, I, I got to go, but when is your meeting over? And tell me, tell me the truth. Meeting with who? What do you mean? But like business, like when, when I done with your business, because um, I, I'm gonna have to talk to you somewhere in private. I'll be here for the next week, coordinating equipment purchase. Well, they're paying me equipment, recycling fees, and organizing them to be taken to Nikamoy to be sold. So I'm I'm available. All right, because yeah, you and I got some business to discuss. All right, Blythe, but I'll I'll be back. And she kind of just, like, um, gets up and just walks out. She doesn't care if she left her coffee or whatever behind, because, like, she she saw the distress signal, and also she just cannot freaking deal to be around him anymore, but she will want to chat with him again today (laughs) once she figures out what the heck she wants to say to him. All right. And as you open the door to the pet shop, Rain, uh, I'm going to say that there's a finch in your hair, (laughs) and Ava, the dog, dashes past you. Oh, right. What is it with me and dogs? <laughs> Every time I'm around dogs, so- something, some hell breaks loose, literally. <laughs> she just says that out loud. <laughs> the moment you say that, Rain kind of, like, looks at you for a second, as if you've, like, as if you'd, like, talk to her directly and then looks around <laughs> as if something was going to happen. <laughs> and then notices that, like, the finch that's, like, I guess it's like holding onto like her hair and it's like slowly like 
kind of like <laughs> sliding down because it can't really grip onto the strands. So she'd like maybe try and get it to step up. <laughs> would I would I roll anything for that like Yeah. If you don't have a shifter specific skill, you can roll parley. I was just gonna suggest parley. <laughs> oh no, parley is a sense skill. <laughs> I rolled a one and a two. And my sense is minus two. <laughs> the bird poops on you and flies out the window. Yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> okay, uh, like, Ava just goes in and looks around at, like, the pandemonium that's happening. It's just like, um... <laughs> So w what's going on here? I I, I saw it, like I got the distress signal from Penny that there was something going on, some havoc happening. What what is it? Honestly, I have no idea. I stepped in here and then everything happened. Like that thing fell over and then that thing fell over. It's like like a patch up disguised as a Rube Goldberg machine <laughs> of chaos. <laughs> um. <laughs> I would like to maybe try and help them get the pets back. I can probably reel the wolves back in. Or the, the dogs. Bloodhounds. Um, the bloodhounds. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest, I'm unsure. But maybe if we find a vampire or something, they could help with the bats. <laughs> I mean, I have something that could help. The thing is, it's going to cost whoever like the pet shop owner is. <laughs> <laughs> Which, looking around, is a little boy and girl who are sobbing. Aww. Oh. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> Dad's going to be mad at us. Um, Dad, you say, where? where is your dad? <laughs> He's in the weapon shop. All right. Um, you two stay here and try to make sure that nothing happens and I'll go find your dad. <laughs> um, uh, Rain, you, you coming with? Or are you gonna help out here or something? Cause I I can uh, uh, I can help out, but um, well you know what I'll I'll just show that I can help out and then I'll and then and then I'll get him to pay me to help out further. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I suppose I would accompany you to the dad. Um, and if we find any animals on the way, I might try and bring them back before we lose them again. But um, if we don't see any, then we can probably just. Uh, discuss this with the, the shop owner. Um, she would, like, turn to the kids and kind of, like, kneel down and, uh, could you tell me how you usually kind of, like, handle the bloodhounds? Like, do they have names or, like, a whistle or... <laughs> yeah, uh, a whistle's a good idea. They have a whistle. They go get the whistle. <laughs> then I guess we would wait for the whistle and then go to the weapon shop? You have the whistle. Then we'll go find- Oh, p perhaps we should maybe ask the, the kids for the- Uh, what- what is your- your dad's name? <laughs> Dad! Yeah, but like his name, like, you know, <laughs> like my- my name's, uh, Avarice. I mean, that means greed, by the way. <laughs> she's just like- she's just like glares <laughs> down at them. She- she hates children. They're <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> crying. <laughs> Rain would maybe like step in between, like kind of scoot in, <laughs> and be like, um, "How would how do like other people usually call your dad?" Rick. Thank you. That's already enough. Uh, we'll we'll okay. try and help you guys figure this out. It's gonna be okay. Just like try and make sure maybe nothing else escapes. Maybe close the windows, and um, we'll 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 try to to help and like get. Get your dad to also fix things. <laughs> mm. And then I guess we would go get Rick. <laughs> yeah. And like <laughs> along the way, weapon shop, I'll send, I'll try to like send Penny to look for a, um, yeah, I'll send Penny and Mel. Actually, yeah, I'll send both of them to look for bats and, ca and catch one each if possible. Yeah. Yeah. They catch one each. Oh, okay. Some educational signs on this path entertain you as you stroll along this fungus wheat walkway to the weapon shop. One Yay. sign says, <laughs> Human blood goes from the heart, through the body, and back to the heart in under one minute. 
Humans sure are interesting. I mean, we are interesting. <laughs> uh, where's the weapon shop? <laughs> you step inside the weapon shop. You find cluttered aisles jam-packed with halberds, spears, cutlasses, bows, shields, armor, nunchucks, metal knuckles, long swords, glaives. It's cram-packed in here. There's so many weapons. Weapons stretch up to the narrow ceiling and across the aisle to the next shelf. It's a tight squeeze through here. Rain is um, probably kind of like walking like really close to Ava, kind of like looking at all the weapons around her and being like, oh god, what if that falls over? And, oh god, what if that's made of silver? <laughs> oh god, why is that on the ceiling? <laughs> hey, Ava oh. kind of like, I mean, she, 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 lets her, she lets her stay under, under her wing if she wants. Ava's actually the same height as you probably a little bit shorter even but her she has big wings so you can you can hide under her wing if you want <laughs> she would she would appreciate that greatly she would be like thank you i um this is a you know there's sharp <laughs> <laughs> as you browse the weapons shop wares i guess you're uh just heading through trying to find rick mm-hmm Mostly concealed, only glimpsing fragments of sight visible through a shelf loaded with racks of daggers, a conversation catches your attention. A six foot two inch tall, 180 pound, lean, strong, confident woman wearing a light armor with lots of leather and hefty shoulder pauldrons and a bunch of belts is talking to a human looking employee behind the counter. With a thud, she loads a massive rhinoceros horn onto the counter. The man's eyes widen in surprise and appreciation. He pulls out a piece of paper, a list of numbers, a corporate buying guide on what he's authorized to pay. After scanning the list for a minute, he says, 300 gold? Absolutely. Are they always this big? The woman chuckles. <laughs> I know you're new to this, but no, this is an especially large one. Her smile is wide and it shows too many teeth. You're going to be seeing a lot of things you never saw as a farmer. She continues grinning, then her face darkens. You'd better hope you don't. Did you hear what happened to Thistleberg? She asks. The man looks curious. No, what happened? The woman wearing all the leather belts leans in close, her voice dropping quieter. Sucked dry. No survivors. He had leaned forward, but straightens uncomfortable. Uh, you know that wasn't us, right? We have plenty of blood here. Her face remains serene and smiling like a cloudless sunny day. Haughtily, she says, Oh, I know. I didn't mean to make you feel like I was accusing you. No, I know exactly what did it. She pauses, confident, calculating. She's got him wrapped around her finger. Anxiously, he asks, What? Wh what? Wh what could drain a town? She pauses, savoring his intense interest. A. Histrocid. They're nocturnal. Must have been like drinking coconuts, cracking into house after house, catching him sleeping. He looks shocked. Here? Why? She looks down at her fingernails, then with her head still tilted down, up at him through her blonde hair. Who knows? Maybe this area smells especially sweet for some reason. She snaps her mouth like a person might chew bubblegum, her teeth big and white. All I smell is opportunity. Histrocid quills fetch a pretty penny. Would you buy if I was selling? His face settles determinedly. Without checking the buying guide, with no hesitation, he replies, Yes. Yes, I would. She smiles and licks her teeth. Great. See you soon. I'm north to Thistleburg. Got a trail to hunt. The floorboards creak and you realize she's heading this way. Rain, what do you look like in this moment? I recognize that voice, don't I? I recognize that voice very well. Yes, you do. The moment she hears that voice like her whole um her whole body like extremely tenses up and like her hair is kind of like standing at an end and like her her eyes are like pinheads and like 
for for a second she kind of like tries to get something from her belt but she like fumbles and then uh does manage to like catch it in the end and she kind of like sprays something in the air which um turns out to be like perfume kind of mm -hmm. and then <laughs> she like takes steps back and tries like really not to have the wood creak and then she like turns around and she tries to just dart out of the shop <laughs> she's trying to run Oh, she's got that look in her eyes. Ava, you can see that your friend has the look in her eyes if she's going to either uh, have a heart attack, run away, attack someone. She's not sure. She's freaking out. Um, okay, I mean, I, like, I, I want to do something. If, if there's anything, GM, that you want to describe before I do it. I do. Okay. Um, okay, so I, I had written that I assumed you guys would be, like, not paying attention to rain. I, I wrote that you had have meandered away, cheerfully chatted, being oblivious. Um, but you're not, you're together. So are you, um, how close are you standing to Rain, Ava? I mean, she's literally under my, un under my wing. Exactly. So she's like oh, very close cute. to her. <laughs> I love it. Okay. We're going to get a little threesome moment here. All right. So, uh, dear blah, 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 near the, okay. Near the shopkeeper counter, the wood floorboards creak, step step so this is happening all too fast you you want to run away rain you haven't yet run away the confident woman wearing all the belts is heading this way closer closer the light is blocked for both ava and rain because you guys aren't too too tall you're not like eight feet tall nope <laughs> we're, we're both we're both shorties <laughs> Aww, so cute i like this woman casually as if he was browsing the daggers on the shelf behind you, a milk-pale-skinned man with orangish-blonde hair, who kind of reminds you of Hack from Yona of the Dawn in the way he holds himself, reaches past you both to pluck a dagger off the shelf. Aw, oh, the player's face right now is so cute. His movement, <laughs> arm outstretched, completely shields you both from view. He's so close to you. He looks down meets both of you in the eyes, and shakes his head slightly from side to side. He looks away at the daggers again. The footsteps behind you both pause, as if she's looking at him, and then step, step, they continue. The door opens, closes, and she's gone. Oh, I wanted to confront her. <laughs> oh, you still can. You can dash out of okay. the store and confront her. Yeah, and actually that's really good because that leaves him and her alone for a second. Okay. Rain and this milk white skin man. But yeah. I I I want to I want to ask Rain something. Um I'll, I'll just be like uh just be like Rain, I I'm going to have to have a word with that woman, but before that I want to know cuz but more I know the better. What what is she to you? What what did Hunter. did she do anything? Did she Yeah. She like she really struggles to speak. Like she like she probably also has, like, a hand kind of, like, around her throat. Like, something is, like, blocking her from speaking. And she kind of does, it, does like, this physical thing because she feels it. But she can't really, like, do anything against it. And, like, she manages to kind of choke out, like, a hunter. All right. Well, that that's enough for me. And GM, like, is... So would, like, would rhinoceros horn, horn like, be poaching or smuggling? Like, what, is that like an, is it, is it illegal? Would um, Ava know that? Because she is like a legal figure. Yeah, yeah, you're the sheriff of Dangan. Yeah, <laughs> so I would know something <laughs> about the law. <laughs> it's not illegal. Um, it's not like, rhinoceroses in our world are definitely, you should not hunt them. That's totally true. I guess I should have made a different, I was just looking for a big old horn <laughs> when I wrote that. Um, so what I would say is that it's a dangerous hunt. It's the sort of hunt where there are easier things to kill. A rhinoceros will take you out. Uh, so it, pretend that rhinoceros are plentiful in this fantasy world. <laughs> okay. Oh, so, so it wouldn't be illegal. Ah, oh, Raz, that no, kind of... No, but it's, it's the sort of thing that shows that she would be a threat to you guys, if that makes sense. Hmm. But, like, okay, because, like, okay, I was going to say, like, oh, she did something illegal, so I was going to confront her. But now I'm just like, oh, she didn't do something illegal. But she knows of something, like, um, she knows... She's withholding information about something. So, okay, I'll, I'll still confront her because she's withholding information about that. But whatever a thing, <laughs> the hydrocinth. Okay. Um, yeah, she'll just say, I'll be right back. Uh, if, if you find Rick, um, keep him here for you, for me, will ya? 
Um, before she walks out, uh, Rain would kind of like, gra- like reach out and maybe like grasp, sort of like her jacket or something, and like hold her back for a second, and then just if it just looks behind her, she'd what? feel like really, really small, kind of like really scared, and be like, "Please don't mention me." Um, Ava winks at you. I won't. <laughs> and then she and then she wa- and then she uh, walks out <laughs> to um after after that after that woman. <laughs> Excellent. We will get to the scene with Ava and the woman. And before we do, we're going to do the scene with you and the guy who is browsing daggers. Cough, cough. <laughs> Rain, he's browsing daggers. No, he's not. He's, he's being <laughs> enveloped in a bear hug and he cannot do anything about it. Ah. When you hug him, he smirks a little bit and teases you gently. Um. I, as the GM, can't tease you, but he said a, a teasing line there. Yeah. <laughs> um, she'd probably also just, like, still be shaking, kind of. And it's very clear that this kind of feels like, in this whole fucking, in this whole friggin', like, weapon shop, um, this feels like the only kind of, like, safe place. So she's kind of, like, just calming down for a while. <laughs> And then, like, I suppose he would, like, give her the time because he's not super talkative. Um, but then she would, like, look up because he is really tall <laughs> and be like, what are you doing here? I thought you would be very far away from a place called Sanguine La. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard about a business model where visitors donated blood to enter, I got curious. As in suspicious curious? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Who is that person you're with? He says, always suspicious of strangers. <laughs> um, Rain has her fire-breathing kitten tattoo on the side of her neck, and she would, like, point to it and be like, uh, a friend and a co-worker. <laughs> and, I mean, as you've seen, she's, like, more of the... She's a very dependable type. <laughs> oh, you joined the fire-breathing kittens. Good. They'll keep you safe. Yeah, that's what uh, Paciano said, too. Uh, at first, I really wasn't sure, but now I, I I really grow to like it. It's It feels nice not to have to like go from place to place all the time, but to just go from place to place with friends <laughs> and come back home every time. <laughs> you ever need someone to visit you in Nikamui? Maybe, like, make sure your neighborhood's safe? I mean, I can give you an address. <laughs> I mean, I don't really have... A place to stay right now. I'm usually like around the outskirts and in like forests and stuff. But like once I make enough money, I'll probably have a place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then you guys chat for like a good fifteen minutes. What would you say the tone of this chat is? Um, a bit tense because I feel like both people would still be very aware that like a very dangerous person is still in the vicinity. So it's kind of like a I think Cameron would try to distract her because she's definitely still shaking and during the chat it kind of gets better and she like calms down. Um, And yeah, Rain would be both extremely delighted and uh, scared out of her wits. (laughs) So it's kind of like a uh, the the therapy the therapy dog session is for her this time. She's not the therapy dog (laughs) this time. Yeah. Also, she really missed him. (laughs) Aww. All right. Well, I will leave you with Cameron, and I will change the camera. So we join Ava as she bursts out of the door to the high-stakes weapon shop. (laughs) The woman with the shoulder pauldrons and all the belts is within sight of you. You can see her. She's don't worry. You didn't lose her or anything. She's right there. What okay. do you do? So first of all, is this someone that I recognize? No. Okay. It's, it's not. It's not Olathe, right? Because she kind of like description sounds a bit like her. Like who? Olathe? No, 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 no. Olathe's oh, okay, okay. gonna actually join us later. That okay. one day she'll, she'll join us. It's okay. She'll be here eventually. <laughs> we miss her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so it's not someone that I know. Okay. Um. All right. Well. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, hmm, I, 
would like to. So should I should I call it after her? Should I go and um join her? I don't have the unnatural speed option. Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna call out and say, um Hey you, Blondie from the from the weapons shop. Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> 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 She's gonna yell, call out after her. Mm. She stops walking and turns around and looks at you. Um. So, so I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna like step forward, and I'm gonna say, I already had a little conversation with the um with, with with the shopkeeper, um about how you know something about a monster attack. I would like you to use a skill to see how the outcome of this conversation. So if you roll poorly, it'll change the conversation. I'll role play like it didn't work. And if you roll well, we'll role play this conversation like it works. So let's see what that outcome is. And then that'll affect what happens next. Okay. Uh, what is there anything you want me to roll or you want me to decide? Your choice. There's a list of basic moves and then there's the moves on your character sheet. Um, whatever you want to do. And what you are trying to do will change what happens. So, like, if you're trying to intimidate versus parley, you know, this will change. So you choose your game here. What skill are you using? Yeah. I am going to use a changeling move called uh, Gorgon's Gift. You can intimidate with weird. Also, when you affix someone with your petrifying gaze, roll plus weird. On a hit, you lock them down. Give an ally plus one forward. On a ten plus, more stuff happens. So, yeah, she is going to use weird to try to intimidate her. Mm. And using keep the her from wandering gift. off, yeah, yeah, okay. literally freeze her in in her yeah. place. Like using using like you see, like any onlookers or like the camera, I guess, would see her eyes start to glow a bit and her and like golden markings appear on her face because she's one hundred percent using her devil magic. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> <sighs> um, and I only rolled a six. <laughs> Ooh, a six is a failure. Yeah, she's seen scarier things than you. And she kind of raises one eyebrow. She's listening to you. Oh, wait, no. That was the the role to intimidate her. So she thinks very little of you. And um, she says, oh, small fry, you wouldn't understand. (laughs) Try me. (laughs) And she really just does not care because you failed on your role. So she's like, I would advise you not to go north. Not to go north? So you're saying that's that's where it is? (laughs) Yeah, you can't handle it, and you should really avoid going north. I would say go south, west, east, stay here, wherever you want, but you can't take on what's there. Can I try to parley with her? Uh, it's a one one scene, one skill, I feel like, you know, otherwise we'd be here all day trying all the skills. So she's not gonna she's not gonna reveal what she knows, but you guys heard a lot in that conversation, so if you had your pens out, you wrote stuff down. <laughs> Hopefully you got all the info that you need. She is convinced that it is north and that is where she is going. And that's where she stalks off to as your attempt to paralyze her in place failed. She does leave. Yeah. So she leaves. Sanguila. Yeah. Unless there's anything else you'd like to do. Well, I, I would like to say something like, well, if, if I shouldn't go up north, then you sure as hell shouldn't go to Dengan. If I catch you there. Well, it's going to, I'm just going to tell you, it's going to be fine. It's going to be entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> you too. If you want to add the name Sigrid Anderson, uh, Ava, to your list of people you don't get along with, that would be Sigrid Anderson. <laughs> you Sigrid guys Anderson. might fight in the future. Who knows? <laughs> Please beat her up. It's okay. <laughs> She's just like, tell me what what hood I shouldn't go to. Well, I'm gonna tell her which one she should go to. <laughs> 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 yeah, hates this woman. <laughs> mm, yeah, all right. Like, uh, I was just going to say, like, yeah, whatever. And then she's going to head back inside the shop. <laughs> <laughs> all right, back inside the shop. There's a lot of halberds and swords and daggers and nunchucks and everything you could possibly want here. There's a, you know, a, a somewhat romantic scene going on in, in an aisle <laughs> and... Uh, and there's a shopkeeper, and what do you do, Ava? And Rain. You kind she, of walk past, and you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. She, she's like, you see, she's like, kind of, um, she's, she's pretty, uh, she's pretty pissed. She's pretty, um, like, uh, just like seething. Um, and then she just goes, shouts louder, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> 
Uh, does, does she see the source of um, the what? <laughs> yeah, it's the guy behind the counter. <laughs> oh, is that... So you Wait, you work here, not at the pet store? I work... <clears throat> I work both places. Oh, th- that explains a lot, because um, your children are alone in the shop with animals running amok. <laughs> oh, no. And he puts down his buying list paper. You know, he was writing down, like, a receipt for having purchased the rhinoceros horn. And he runs out of the shop, doesn't even notice the couple in the aisle, exits the store, and runs over to the pet store. I actually would like to take this opportunity. Can I, like, look through his, um, the, the papers on the desk to see if I can see any more stuff that, like, this Sigrid Anderson has um, given him? Yeah. Rain, would, Rain also would have liked to do that, so she'd probably, like, join up. I, yeah, I, I, she, I want, I want looking, to see if I can find some dirt on that woman. <laughs> she's looking for a very particular item, or like, sort of like two particular items, kind of, of like a certain animal on the list. All right, what are those items? Um, she would like to scan for the, so like he has to write down what he purchased, right? So like what animal it's from, what part it is. You're looking at a purchasing guide, so it's a list of lots and lots and lots of animals, parts, and how much the shop will pay for them. Wasn't he writing, like, something down? Yes, he was writing a receipt for his records that he, like, keeping... Imagine what it was like to run a shop before digital transaction histories. You have to write down every time you take 300 gold out and pay someone for a rhino horn. So he was writing in, a like, a, a receipt thingy to give to... And, and that's the company, yeah. right? Yeah. No, that's what I would um, be looking for. Like that that record. I'd be looking through those receipts to see what else like what else she's um brought in. See if I could find and, anything. Yeah, those would not be at the front desk. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh Ren would like to, to look at the guide before we break into the back because I know that we will. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> She'd like to see if on the guide it's on on the guide under the C section there's like either like a calipus or like a shut loop listed oh, okay like the purchasing amount that this place is willing to pay for it yeah, yeah. there's definitely a dollar amount there yeah it's higher than a rhino <laughs> she's um <laughs> the moment she reads that she's gonna like crumple the paper a bit and then be like oh oops <laughs> and then she would like look at ava and be like you also want to break into the back right because like I want to break into the back. Oh hell yeah! I want to yeah. know what this guy bought. <laughs> I want to know what this guy bought. <laughs> yeah, um, me me too. Yeah, perfect. That the store is just unattended. Yeah, uh, that that can guy over there. Or? That guy over there. Can you can you trust him? Is he gonna snitch? Oh on yeah, us? totally. Okay, good. No. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, he probably snitch on the guy. <laughs> <laughs> kind of says, well, I mean, I'll look the other way if if he's an ally. Again, <laughs> winking at her. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Oh, yeah, I mean, I I do have that skill, but in this system, it might not work, because I have a negative... Like, it's probably using Dusk, right? Uh, what skill? What um, move? I would like to try to get, I guess, to break in the back, if we have to pick a lock, is there, like, a skill that I'd have to use? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so, when you sneak around, you would use Skulk, mm-hmm. which is Dusk. 2d6 plus Dusk. I can I can skulk with um I have a feature called you don't see me I can skulk with iron by just being so intim- so terrifying that they know better to acknowledge than to acknowledge me. <laughs> oh, and if I stay still for a few seconds, I turn invisible until I move or speak. Oh, we're talking like it's a locked door, not mm-hmm. like there's people looking at you. So the question is, do you unlock the door? And I think that would be like a scout when you scope out defenses or skulk which is sneak around both of those are dusk i think okay. to pick a lock yeah I could I or assist? you can magic your way through the lock oh Ooh. okay i would like to try that oh you want to assist uh yeah i mean i'm really bad at heart but <laughs> i mean not as bad as in sense but um she <laughs> rain would kind of be like you know when you like try to do a thing and you have a dog and you do like a thing that requires no amount of dog, but your dog really wants to help you, so they just kind of stand there. 
<laughs> She'd probably do that because that's what it probably will amount to, but she does want to help, so she would, like, try. <laughs> yeah, so you tell me what move you're trying, and I'll let you know if it works, you know. Or I guess you let me know if it works, yeah. So first, what move are you using? Are we doing assist first or lockpick first? Uh, I think assist first and because, then yeah, because move. Yeah. Assist could put could give uh, Ava like a plus one if it goes through. All right. What's your assist? Is is your assist a success? Uh, that's a one and a six, and I have nothing in heart, <laughs> so it's a seven. Okay. Hmm. So go ahead and read assist. On a seven to nine, they get a plus one to their roll. Or plus two if you expose yourself to danger, or you protect them by taking some or all of the danger to yourself. Since there's no danger, I guess that would amount to a plus one. To Ava's role. Oh, great. And, Ava, um, what move are you using? I am using... Uh, you said I could, I could magic my way through, right? If you have magic for it. I don't know what magic you have. Oh, wait. Hold on. I have... I can literally... Okay. <laughs> I have a move called Ghost Story. When I phase out of reality to move through a barrier, um, I can't interact objects while phased out. Part of it gets stuck. Okay, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would like to try to phase out of reality to move through a barrier and move through the door. Is, is, do I roll weird for that, or do I just do that? Because I have to choose two... Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Read the skill. Oh, never mind. I, um... I, I don't have to roll anything. It's just when you phase out of reality to move through a barrier, choose two. Onlookers can see your shimming form. Part of you get stuck. Take one piercing damage. You can't interact with objects while phased out. Okay, so I'm going to do the part of me gets stuck, so I take one damage. One piercing damage. Um, and also, you can you guys can still see me shimmering. Like, Okay, so it's actually cool because what you see is like, you just see her say, so we just want to get through this door, right? Hmm, you know what? do this and then you see her like her form like changes to like just this red shimmering form of her and then she just walks straight through the door <laughs> and like she when she phases back in like i guess part of her wing gets stuck there you just see like feathers kind of like moving there and then she just pulls it out like and then um you just hear like a grunt from the other side and then like the feathers just fall off to the other side of the door <laughs> so <laughs> okay. Are you all right in there? Yeah, I'm fine. I just, I'm not used to doing this. I can only do it after I've come back from... Never mind. Um, so then, uh, yeah, I would just open the door from within, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just do that. <laughs> yeah, the door is open from within. And then you see, like, the, the feathers actually, they're not going to attach themselves again. Those feathers are lost. Because, like, I guess a part of her cut, her wing just, like, got sheared off. Yeah, and you took oh. the one luck. Right? Yeah. One I damage. Took, I took one damage. How much luck do you have remaining? Six. That's still pretty good. Um, all right, so we're through. We're in the back. Uh, I'll start looking around. Um, I'll save you some time. Do you remember those locations you wrote down in the beginning? Do you want to list them off? There's four. There's the um, Unholy Grounds Coffee Shop, Bloodhounds and More Pet Shop, Company Executive Offices, Weapons Shop, High Stakes. That's what you told us. Yes. The records are in the Company Executive Offices. Oh. There's materials back here. Like, you see more rhino horns. You see uh, talons. Like, the Jurassic Park famous scene with the Velociraptor Claw, where he's like, hold this small child. And the small child's like, wow, a Velociraptor Claw. You see one of those. <laughs> you see, like... Like ox horns, you see lots of lots of goodies. A hide, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a rabbit's foot. Uh, Rain would like try to check out the stuff that's already there. Like she'd look for very specific talons or fangs or hide. I guess also. You do not find the thing that you are looking for here. Mm. She she breathes like a sigh of relief and kind of like comes down again after finding the receipt <laughs> or like the the buying guide okay i will look for um anything that i know is illegal to um to have or to trade or any just other illegal things going on inside inside this back of the thing yeah I, i'm gonna look around for suspicious stuff <laughs> you uh roll i'm not even gonna make you roll you do not find any illegal animal parts okay oh well um <laughs> 
Is there like a log of purchased goods somewhere? You do not find a log of purchased goods. Yeah. I think that would be at the executive offices. You do find. Now I want you to roll an investigation check. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, it's using sense, right? Yeah. Roll 2d6 and add sense. Can oh I assist God, again? I because. Or, I mean, I think you st- like you. I could still use the assist from last time, right? Because like it's just it's it's there until I use it. Right. Okay. Uh, oh, I guess my question would be, would you roll? Oh, what I roll? I'm gonna use a grit point actually because I have not rolled above a four on two d sixes. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> yeah. I am not kidding. It's well five plus some one six. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you got a six. Um, you get to ask zero questions, even with that plus one from Rain? Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, no. I, I got a seven with the plus one from Rain. Right. Yeah. Okay, yep. you can ask two questions. And two Rain, questions. what's your number? Oh, true. I also have to investigate. <laughs> um, oh, that's bad. <laughs> okay, so I rolled a one and a two. Oh, my God. I have a sense of minus two, so that's a one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So both of you find... In a cold box, bags of blood, and Ava has two questions. Um, can I give one to Rain? If 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 you want to ask a question, because like uh, yeah, so we each have one question. So if there's something you want to find out, you can find it out. Yeah, definitely. You meant a blood bag. (laughs) I Um, thought you were just giving me one of the blood bags. (laughs) (laughs) You lost some blood here. I mean, have a drink. You totally could, and no one's gonna. Yeah, hands <laughs> you blood back. That's not. I don't hungry? think that's how you get blood back into the body just by drinking. <laughs> Rain is not a vampire. <laughs> you donated some earlier, so I mean, you, you want a sip? I had coffee. You want some blood? So <laughs> Ava. <laughs> she had a puppuccino. It's okay. I, I don't know. How, I don't know how mortals work. I mean, like you lost some blood, you get you get some blood back in you. Isn't that how it works? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but usually, like, not for drinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I guess my question here would be, what is something that doesn't belong here? The blood bags. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and there's no food or water, so that's gonna be what doesn't belong. There you go. Uh, Rain, questions about the blood bags? Uh, who sponsored this event? Event. What do you mean? Or like the... This is like a kind of a convention, right? Or is it like an established town kind of? This is like a tourist trap. Oh, okay. Maybe the shareholders then? <laughs> That's a good like- question. Ooh, okay. Um... And, and don't worry, Ava, I'm going to give you your question back, because it wasn't really fair. Yeah. <laughs> so think of yours. Okay. Um, I can see the sadness on your face. Um, So, uh, that you know, I will tell you. Give me one second. Sacred Mountain Retreats. You see on one of the storage shelves, property of Sacred Mountain Retreats. And that's how you know that that is the name of the company. Is that good? Yeah. And then if Olathe was here, she'd be like, <gasps> Sacred Mountain Retreats. <laughs> Ava, what's your question? I mean, we'll be sure to tell her later, I suppose. <laughs> yes, she'll be here. Hmm. I, I mean, basically, like, I, I know that it's vampires that are, um, like, collecting blood and stuff, but, like, why is it, un- like, is it something that I would expect to be here? Like, oh, just every, um, every shop has its own little supply of blood. Like, well, like, why... <laughs> Why is this unusual? Like, why Like, why is this bag here something to note? <laughs> like, this box of blood bags. Yeah, that would be my question. Like, why is this important? It would imply that the shop owner that you just saw was drinking it. Oh, okay. So, th- th- he was... A, okay. Okay, good to know. He's, he's a vampire? Yes. Okay. Uh, it says Rick's on the blood bag. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like when you're at work and you don't yeah. want people to drink your milk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe he's like spitting it. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we know he's a vampire, I guess. Yeah. <sighs> well, that's um. <laughs> I, I guess that's the best we can do for <sighs> coming in here because she like literally 
took damage to get here. It's like, I, I want something to come out of it, but I guess nothing came out of it. Here's a question for you. What all do you know about Rick? Mm, Does he have certificates for his pets? <laughs> like for the pet shop? You know he is involved in running of the pet shop, right? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, what else do you know about Rick? He is also involved in, like, at least a clerk for this thing, or he runs this shop as well. Yep, he's involved in the running of the weapon shop. You know he's a... Vampire? Uh Uh-huh. Is he involved in running the, the, like, all the other shops too? Like the coffee shop? That's a good question. And, (laughs) well, it doesn't really matter. Don't worry about who runs the coffee shop. But (laughs) who are we forgetting? There's two... Children? What? Do vampires have kids? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So they might not be children, or they might be vampire children, which are just, yeah, I mean, it's they're a children. mystery. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> mystery. Okay, it was worth it for Ava then to lose the point of <laughs> damn it, point of luck. <laughs> oh yeah. There, okay. So, hmm? is ahead. there like on the on the desk, like you know, one of those like office? family pictures that are like framed with the kids maybe (laughs) yes there's a framed picture of rick with those two kids and joining us for part one were ava well now knowing that there's a mystery here makes it all worth it rain bye (laughs) slappy hands 45 says i love that there's a different ttrpg in every episode five stars Thanks, Slappy Hands 45. And if you've got a review, leave it on iTunes and we'll read it in the intermission part of an episode. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Bye. Today's mid episode shout out is from Shiesto, maybe. S H I E S T O. Shiesto, maybe. Who says, quote, Rosamond Park stars as Edith Wilson in Edith. A scripted comedy podcast exploring the untold true-ish story of America's secret first female president. After President Woodrow Wilson suffered a massive paralyzing stroke in the White House, Edith Wilson did the unthinkable. She told no one. And for almost a year following the end of World War I, Edith Wilson acted as the de facto unelected president. She would sign documents as him, she would fire people as him, she would even cause international incidents as him. And all along the way, enemies, both internal and external, inched closer to finding out her secret. New episodes every Thursday. End quote. You can arrange for us to read your shout-out at firebreathingkittenspodcast.com. We also have paperbacks, hardcovers, and audiobooks of our adventures on Amazon and Audible. Just search Fire Breathing Kittens Podcast. Uh, Fire Breathing Kittens is one word, and podcast is the second word. That's our author name. Lastly, we don't pay to advertise our show, so the only way we can grow is if you tell someone about us. Thanks. Great. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to Spectres and the Spurs. Oh, man. All right. Um, I'm going to have both of you guys roll a d6, and I will roll a d6. I've got the number. I will hold up. There we go. That many pieces of paper. There we go. Okay. It's... Let me get some paper here. I only got to get six at most, right? Okay. Ready? In my closed fist is a number of paper slips. Whoever's the closest to this number has to tell us what happened in part one. What are your guys' numbers? Four. Five. (laughs) How many paper slips am I holding? One? Correct. Who's the closest to one? That would be me. What happened last time? Uh, Here, I'll I'll do a recap in character. Um, All right, so we get to this amusement park for our, our own reasons. Um... Rain because she wanted to, uh, because she wanted to, you know, go out and do stuff, you know. Um, Ava because she's supposed to be meeting her dad around here. Um, and yeah, that's it for for now. And then the the meeting with the dad did happen. Oh right, R- R- Rain gave some blood, uh, to two portions because she donated some for Ava who did not want to donate her own devil's blood because he would taint the supply and she'd have to make a deal with someone. Um, yeah, we did some cool things to get in the the amusement park, and then Ava met with her dad, found out that, um, that he knows that she's, like, his unofficial guardian angel, or devil, or whatever, <laughs> and she's just like, what is going on here? Who the hell told him? 
this is not good. And then, um, what else? Oh, yeah. And then we went into a pet shop. Well, Rain did and all hell let loose because her, uh, her, her little mink bird or a little mink bird did a bunch of stuff and whole domino effect happened. And I let the dogs out, <laughs> the bloodhounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Oh, yeah. And then we went to look for the shop owner, uh, found found this uh, hunter lady um, who was real meany to, like, probably hunt and rain and uh, <laughs> is a real enemy of uh, Ava's <laughs> after dismissing her. <laughs> and... What else? Oh, yeah, she met with her uh, friend or lover or something. Maybe she has a crush on him. Maybe he has a crush on her. Who knows? There's there's some romance going on there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then we broke into the back of the shop looking for some dirt on that, that lady or, you know, on Rick. And we found some on him. <laughs> something doesn't quite add up about him being a vampire and having kids. So, yeah, that's, that's probably it. <laughs> All right. And we've got... Some things going on in the background. We've got a rumored monster up north. Uh, you guys might have some, the players might have some information about whether or not that's where the monster is. And I'm sure it's still there. Pickles did nothing. Pickles can do no wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Pickles is a saint. A bread loving, no thought, <laughs> head empty, little saint. <laughs> Aww. And so you guys are currently looking at a family photo of two kids, and they look, ready for this, younger than they are now in that photo. Looks like they're like a year younger. Hmm. Oh, and so does Rick. He looks hmm. a little bit younger in this photo. Um, <laughs> the players are confused, and they are writing this down. <laughs> Okay, so there, there are a couple possible explanations for this. Either um, he just recently became a vampire, or um, these pictures were taken a very, very, very long time ago. Or shenanigans. <laughs> or, or something else. Who, who knows? <laughs> also, or, or maybe, yeah. Just so it's on record, um, when we found the blood bags, Rain would have closed them again. <laughs> I don't know if Cameron is in the room or not, but she would probably be like, okay, <laughs> let's not expose him to blood. <laughs> oh, like your vegan friend near the grill with the steaks. Yeah, <laughs> except they start like salivating. At it. <laughs> they have a, a special trait to salivate. I guess the only thing left is to like confront him. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, I just want payment for the bats that I that I helped catch for him and for, you know, I mean, you deserve some for get. Did you get the dogs back or something or not yet? But uh, anyway, not we yet. We paid for it. But um, we could maybe split up and I can, like, see if I can locate them. Yeah, I mean, but before, I mean, catching those bats is going to be hard for me to do. So I need some comp know, know what I'm being compensated beforehand. So, yeah. All right, I mean, I, I guess I would head over to the pet store so I can talk to Rick. Uh, should I come along, or should I rather get the dogs? Uh, I, I can handle this. All right, then Rain would, like, try and find the dogs. I'd like to point out that as two people out of three people, how do I phrase this? If at any point a monster attacks any of you, your maximum strength as a party, like, I statted this creature for three players fighting it. And you should be more uh, afraid, <laughs> is what I'm hmm. saying. You should be more afraid of bumping into, do you even, do you remember what it's called? Hydrocid? A hystrocid. A hystrocid. Oh, hystrocid. Hystrocid. I got hydrocid. Okay. Hystrocid. That cracks into houses in the middle of the night like coconuts. Slurp, slurp. Slurp, slurp. Maybe, uh, I'm letting you split up, but I'm saying be afraid. <laughs> Rain is always a friend. <laughs> Splitting up. All right. We're going with... I, okay. uh, where is Rain going? Rain would turn into a wolf with one of her shifter skills and try to, like, locate them with scent, I suppose. Rain is tracking the bloodhounds. Got it. All right. And Ava, you are going to the pet store, right? Mm-hmm. Bloodhounds. Yeah, exactly. and Okay. And more. 
All right, you are in the pet store. The pet store has been somewhat put back together since you last were here. The bat cage that was on the ground, the finch cage, you know, all those, they've been stood back up. And the kids are still crying, but not, like, not as much as they were before. They just look sad. And when the door opens, Rick, holding a broom, looks at you. Mm, okay, so then I'm going to just walk up to him. Not, I'm ignoring the kids. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to say, uh, so you have a bit of problems with your uh, with your animals getting out, right? Yeah. He looks around the store at the like, empty bird cages and bat cages. If I mean, if you want my companion, and I can uh, can wrestle r- wrangle him up for you. Uh, but we you'll have to you have to pay us, of course. Here, I mean, I can show you. I can give you a little specimen for uh, for about say ten gold. I, I I got two of your bats back, but the rest of them you're gonna have to pay for it. Oh, um, I, I make 10 gold a year. Make 10 gold a year. Hmm. But it's okay. You don't have to get the bats back. I've got more. 10 gold a year, huh? Well, I mean, considering that I just saw you buy a rhinoceros horn for 300, you definitely get more than that. That's the company's money. I just write checks. Write checks? Yeah, I, and I... Have, I have a, they're all numbered. Um, he looks kind of awkward. He's like, I, I'm really just a former farmer trying to work here, you know, doing my job. I'm, I'm not, I don't have any gold. I can't pay you, but it's okay. You don't have to find the bats. I have more bats. Mm. And he reassures the kids. He's like, kids, it's okay. You won't be mine in this store for very long. And he says to you, we're just short staffed right now. It's okay. I mean, We've got plenty of bats, not enough workers. Mm, all right. Well, h- how about I walk you to the uh, how about I walk you to the weapons shop then? Because I think there is some something we can some mutual arrangement we can make. I can't go to the weapon shop right now. He says while holding the broom. I've got to get some pets back in this shop. Um, it, come here, kids. It's okay. I shouldn't have asked you to watch the store. Hey, look, it's all right. We've got more bats and birds and dogs in the overflow cages. Let's go get some, yeah? And the kids sniffle and nod, and they slowly stop crying. And he looks at Ava, and he's like, Transporting the overflow animals to the front might take me a while by myself. You can stay here in the shop, but I can't, uh, if you want to buy anything, like, I, I, let me go get animals for you to buy. So just, um... Wait here, I guess, or do you want to come with me? Mm, I'll I'll come with you, but okay. Um, yeah, I'll I'll come with you. The thing is, though, you said something that's interesting. You said former farmer. Well, I mean, is, is that what you what you were when you became what you are now? She 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 emphasizes uh she emphasizes the what part. What a store clerk. Uh. <laughs> You you know what I'm what what, I, what I'm talking about, <laughs> like someone who Poor. feeds through other <laughs> uh, other means, someone who benefits greatly from this amusement park being open. Oh, a vampire! Yeah, no, I was born one. Then, how about these kids? I mean, they're they look like mortal children. Uh, these are my children, Henry, Amelia, and they like look at you like this is my dad. <laughs> <laughs> we call him dead <laughs> they look a lot like him <laughs> all right um yeah I, i'm gonna I, I would like to use my heart of darkness changeling move to investigate a monster at its trail i can intimidate and parley with intelligent monsters all right <laughs> um <laughs> so i'm trying to decide if i should intimidate or if i should, I should parley i'm gonna intimidate because that's what i'm better at <laughs> Uh, yeah. Or, like, do I have to roll an investigation in order to do the investigate thing? I guess I have to roll to investigate. Right? Yeah, well, what do I roll here? Intimidation or investigation? Inspectors and Spurs, the characters are responsible for a lot of their personal moves, which are different than the basic moves of the game. So I'm opening up your character sheet right now to read, uh, what is it? Which one? Heart of Darkness. You can intimidate yeah. and parley with intelligent monsters 
When you investigate a monster or its trail, add these questions to your questions list and ask one of them for free, even on a miss. If you're trying to intimidate or parley, normally you can't with a monster because they don't talk. Mm -hmm. Um, So this lets you intimidate or parley a non-speaking thing. That didn't really work because he's not a monster. Um, He's a person. Uh, He's both, but he's definitely not the kind that you couldn't talk to without this. So he's going to... I guess you're all walking to the back together, right? I'm going to move the plot Oh, along. okay, okay. Yeah, I'm going to move the plot Um, along. sure. I'll be walking along together. Yeah. But with him together. Yeah, he's a person. <laughs> okay. So you're, he's like, he's he's like, like a, a devil. <laughs> <laughs> the two kids, the man and you, head to the back of the pet shop. There is a kennel region outside. <laughs> Tall metal chain link fences, rectangular long runs. If you want to parley or intimidate with him, you can, but we will give you something to work with here. Uh, you have found out that he was born a vampire and so were his children from that previous scene, so let's move on to the next one. So, okay. Uh, the two kids, the man, and you head to the pet shop. There's a kennel region outside, tall metal chain link fences, rectangular long runs. You guys ever seen a kennel? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's like a fence with nothing inside it except dogs. All right. As you approach it, you can see something's wrong. The metal is twisted, ripped open, open to the sky, but the birds didn't all escape. The children have fallen behind you and haven't yet seen the still unmoving forms of the deceased dogs, bats, and finches laying on the ground yet. Okay, there we go. All right. Oh, this looks like a bit of problem. How, how about you take? How about you? Uh, how, how about you uh, take me to your manager and? We can sort something. Yeah, I, I I can help sort something out. Yeah, I'll, I, I guess, like, yeah, if you take me to your manager and make sure I get a word with him as soon as possible, I'll, I'll give you, like, I'll give you two gold. That makes sense. It is a logical offer, and you expect it to be received well. You're asking to see his boss. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Your whoever owns the store, honestly. But, like, I mean, if, if like, his boss is the easiest thing he can yeah. think of, then sure. Okay. Rain walks up. You've got a bloodhound. There's a bunch of dead dogs behind a twisted kennel, ripped open. You just arrived on the scene. What do you do? I found one of the... Uh, uh, well, that... Uh, okay. Um, is everyone all right? All right, so we've got a chaotic scene here. We've got Ava saying, take me to your boss. <laughs> we've got Rain being like, I got a dog and oh no, what's going on here? <laughs> We've got the kids crying. We've got Rick freaking out because he wasn't at the store and he was at the other store and he's like, he can't juggle all this. He's just a former farmer. He's okay. So what Rick says, and I want you guys to put the mystery pieces together in your head was, I didn't do this. It wasn't me. And it wasn't my kids. He looks panicked. Like you're going to burn him and his family at the stake. Oh, uh, Rain would probably try to like get between I mean, she'd try to, like, maybe put the dog in, like, the, the shop kennel or something. <laughs> so it doesn't, like, store. run off or cause any, like, chaos. <laughs> or maybe yeah. just, if Cameron's still there, she might just hand, hand the dog to Cameron. And if it's, like, on a leash or something, like a makeshift, just like a rope. He's <laughs> not still here because you didn't bring him with you. Then. <laughs> but don't worry. Dog's in the shop. Dog's fine. All right. Okay. Um, Then she would probably try to, like, put herself maybe between the 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 terrible scene and like everyone else and maybe try to like maybe usher them back out again be like no no it's okay uh, i know you're not a chupacabra uh, we know there's a dangerous um <laughs> monster in the north um just maybe get get your kids like out of this room because it's uh not good for everyone involved you know when there's death around you get this like really uh sinking feeling that makes you really sick and let's just we're all we're all riled up just just let's get out of this room and we know you're not responsible it's okay i have vampire friends i know you don't do this let's just you know de-escalate a little bit and she would like try and usher everyone just like out of the room at least a half an hour later the kids and the dog are taken care of and he is doing, uh, for too old, he is taking you to the CEO and you're mm-hmm. walking along the the path with the dead fungus plants. Did you guys hear the episode HR Violations in Space? Not yet. No? All right. Well, you're in the setting that was created there. 
which is a wheat farm that was fungus and the farmers could no longer grow things. Oh. Rick is oh. the farmer who appeared in that episode. Oh. So as you walk along these fungus wheat paths, you are talking to Rick on your way there. What do you say? Mm, okay. Well, I mean, you know what? I, I want to try to figure out what, like, if he's a... Uh... If he's hiding something, I don't quite know how to do it, though. It's like, I don't know, something just... I, Like, the player senses that something is amiss, but <laughs> I don't... Or, like, the character does, but, like, the player does not know. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to do that. I don't... I mean, we can't really bring up the picture unless we're like, hey, we broke into your office. <laughs> yeah. So we can't really know that... I mean, we could try to just have, like, oh. some chit-chat. I know. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say, so that that woman back there, I think her name starts with an S or something. Uh, Sigrid. Ah, Sigrid. Oh, like, yeah. There's like a growl in her voice when she says the name. Yeah, I, I could hear that. It was pretty cool. Um, so that that woman, Sigrid. What what exactly? How often do you see her? And what's your relationship to her? She's a hunter. She comes in with animal parts, and as part of the weapon shop, I trade them with weapon makers and like turn them into weapons and etc. I'm just a former farmer, but thankfully Sacred Mountain Retreats hired me and I would have been really out of luck without them because my fields have all gone fallow and he points around to all of the dead wheat around you. I couldn't be a farmer anymore, so it was really nice. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's just a hunter who brings in parts. We are uh, Sangrila is Sang Sanguila is a small resort town, but we're trying to be more on the map. We're new. We just opened. Hmm. Because she seemed to be have been. Because she seemed to what to be like uh, threatening you. So, if if she was, I'd want to know. No, she wasn't threatening me at all. I mean, yeah, I'm a vampire, but this is a town for vampires. You know, like that's kind of the point of it. That's why everything's vampire themed. And he points around to the black cloaks with red lining that you can buy in the clothing store to the dripping strawberry ice cream and red velvet cake you can buy in the dessert shop and he said sacred mountain retreats they they knew i mean so we age like any other human we're not immortal we just have to drink blood and we can't eat food my kids will grow up one day just like i did so it's it's very nice that sacred mountain retreats came in and saved the day after my farm failed Oh, all right. So, so you're the kind of vampire that doesn't like go hunting for blood and live forever. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. I thought I thought you were the kind that lives forever, <laughs> and is like you know does evil things. Okay. Um. Yeah. I mean, he seems like from the picture, she she can tell that he's telling the truth. I mean, he doesn't seem to be fighting anything. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just gonna drop this thread. I guess I don't think it's going anywhere. <laughs> Rain. What are you saying to Rick? After hearing that Rain would be like, uh, in like kind of like an int interested tone, like she's like trying to learn something new or something, she'd be or something has like piqued her interest, and she's like, "Oh, you age? I I thought like vampires don't age. I'm sorry if that's like offensive or anything." <laughs> oh no, it's not offensive at all. Uh, yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm not a normal vampire. What? So is that something that happens with everyone around this town? Like, is it just that everyone's just a normal, like, human vampire? The only difference is you just drink blood instead of eat food? No, 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 no. He takes a deep breath. You're gonna think this is silly. Hmm, try me. <laughs> I wouldn't know unless I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> he scratches his head and sighs. So, who knows if this is true or not, but... But <laughs> my mom told me that way back, way, way back, we were the survivors of a terrible event, a disaster caused by a, <laughs> he chuckles, by a teapot, the charming Chabin, a terrible ancient invention. The teapot? So y'all are basically just cursed humans? Is that what you're saying? Oh no, we're blessed. We're the only survivors. Oh, okay. Mom said the teapot made water undrinkable. You could drink it, but you didn't feel quenched. You just felt thirstier and thirstier. And in a eh, somewhat misguided attempt to survive, my great-great-great-great-great-great-grandparents cast magic on themselves so they could drink something, anything, 
which ended up being blood and it was all they could drink, but it got them out. They escaped, they lived, they got away. We're the only ones who survived the charming Chapin, my mom told me. Wouldn't have made it much longer with all the people and animals and plants dying. Everything else unable to drink water, too. But we made it long enough to get away. He sighs. <sighs> Unfortunately, even after my ancestors got away, the magic was permanent and we've been drinking blood ever since. I don't even know what water tastes like. I can't put it in my mouth. This... Mm. This Chabin, do you know more about it? Like, is there any record of where exactly this catastrophe was, perhaps? Or what happened to it after? Or how... I mean, right now, we have a lot of drinkable water, so something must have happened to it. Is there, like, any any stories how this catastrophe was ended? I don't know how it ended, but we ran away. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is very vital information. <laughs> Yay, my players got some long-form storytelling. <laughs> Okay, like at least something good came out of investigating that that back room. We got some lore. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, like if we if we uh can't stop this evil guild, we'll just t- all turn ourselves into magic vampires and run away. It would not work very well. I mean, Darn there it. would be nothing to drink after everything else died. <laughs> A flaw in my plan. <laughs> I mean, w- when y'all die, you still kind of live on in a way, as, lo- as long as you go to hell or maybe the other place. I don't know anything about the other place. I know a lot about hell. <laughs> <laughs> some interesting headspaces here. All right, so some educational signs on... Yay! <laughs> educational signs on this path entertain you as you stroll along this fungus wheat walkway. One sign says... A human has about 0.2 milligrams of gold, which is mostly contained in their blood. You arrive at the Sacred Mountain Retreat's executive offices. This building has a cute, well-decorated interior lobby. The hallway extending beyond says left CEO, right blood bank. I guess we're going to the CEO unless you want to break into the blood bank or something. I have no desire for blood, so... (laughs) (laughs) Okay, see how it is. (laughs) Okay, and I'm just going to let you, the players, know that this was kind of an Olathe scene. Uh, This is one of her backstory NPCs. And since she's not here, I'll just tell you. uh, The person who taught Olathe, Ranger Magic, runs Sacred Mountain Retreats, which is a company that turns farmer towns into tourist traps. And so the goal here, which I, I... I'll just tell you it since I I'm not going to get to role play it but um, basically uh, so you guys are in a very shiny expensive looking wood door has a plaque next to it that says Sacred Mountain Retreats CEO inside the office behind a beautiful desk with a wide view of Sanguilla behind her sits a fey woman with light purple hair light green skin white eyes dark green clothes seeing Olathe she raises one eyebrow surprised I'll act through it because Olathe's not here Olathe, I... I thought you left me. Olathe would have been like, yeah, I totally did, you're evil. (laughs) She would have been like, well, how has the magic I taught you been serving you? And Olathe would have been like, so good, so glad you taught me that. Oh no, now I'm talking to you. And then she would have been like, I taught you wonderful magic and you never paid me back. What a chance and opportunity you have to do so now. Don't you feel that is just? Would you hear me out? So you guys, what does Aletha do? <laughs> I would wager Ava knows Aletha a bit better. <laughs> mm, okay, I mean, what would she do? Would she hear her out? Or would she run screaming from the office? Or would she punch her in the face? Or kick her? Probably hear her out, I think. Okay. All right. She would hear... This region was sucked dry of life by an extraplanetary object, the Atlas Space Station, months ago. Ironically, it had been home to vampire farmers who grew wheat to trade as horse food with the Tavistocks of Mishwi in exchange for regular blood draws from their horses. She waves her hand side to side in the air in front of her face. You don't need to know the details. Long story short, their fungus crop failure was my opportunity— I swooped in and saved the town using sacred mountain retreats to fund the creation of Sanguila, 
Visitors donate blood, the vampires get something to drink, the shops get customers. It works out for everyone. It would be a real shame if anything changed. What I'd like you to do, Olathe, is to use that ranger magic I taught you to detect disease on the fields around Sanguila. If any patches show signs of recovering, do a simple reverse plant growth to spoil any land that might be bouncing back. We don't want the townsfolk here having choices, now do we? It's better for them to live less complicated lives. And it's so much easier to staff a tourist store and work retail than to farm the hard ground all day. Yes, Sanguila is better for everyone. So that's my request. Quick, simple, that's all I'd ask from you. If you do this, you won't owe me a favor anymore. What do you say? Uh, and then Olafla would be like, sure, I'll go spoil some land. Or no, F off. Or sure, and then not do it. Or a variety of things. <laughs> but um, since Olafla's not here, all you guys see is a CEO. Uh, yep, that's a CEO. And there's all the answers to your questions that there's no way in universe for you to find out because Alitha's not here. Yeah. So we, I guess like, yeah, we, we would just walk in and, um, so, um, you're the boss around here, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> you, you sound a bit like my dad. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I've, I've got a few questions for you, but first, there is, like, um, a very pressing matter here. Um, it seems that this, um, seems like there's a monster going around, and that monster might have broken into this guy's pet shop, or your pet shop. I don't know. He says that you own the pet shop. No, my dollars. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Those uh, you, cages you were my... expensive. <laughs> I, I know, so, you, yeah, you know, yeah. You get along so well with him. Um, <laughs> which just kind of like glares off in the distance for a second and then just goes back to, well, um, listen, uh, in exchange for something, you know, gold and perhaps a favor, we could we could track that monster down for you. Or I mean, I, I would. Would you too, <laughs> Doreen? I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to speak for my, my F5 Breathing Kittens partner here, but we were looking for something interesting to do. Rain would go along. Like, Rain would, would not be like, uh... I mean, we can't really do anything on Aletha's behalf, but you probably would have offered to hunt the monster instead of, like, screwing over the farmer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know what yeah. Aletha would have done. She prob she's probably off doing her own thing somewhere else in the amusement park. Yeah. I mean, hey, I, okay. everyone to, to themselves. Um, you know. But, uh, well, I mean, if she joins us on the hunt, great. If, if not, then... So be it. <laughs> I like that idea, though, that the hunting the monster is a way to pay back the favor because this lady did teach Olathe magic, you know, so like she Olathe owes her a favor, but she's also evil. <laughs> so yeah, but not like she also has fey blood, I assume, which might be very tasty to the coconut slurping, <laughs> blood sucking monster that's so strong that even cigarette. Uh, was like, well, maybe you shouldn't go to the north, aka here, because it's here now. <laughs> well, yeah. she has blood, the monster wants blood, uh, and if she doesn't want to lose all of her employees and all of her inventory, <laughs> aka the patch up animals, you know, we could try and fix that, because if there is a giant rampaging blood-sucking monster destroying sanguila then there is no sanguila to you know screw the farmers over with <laughs> mm, and you know yeah we would be willing to do that for a price <laughs> yes you make sense i mean it is worth investing in you fire-breathing kittens to not lose my investment in sanguila a business is most in the hole when they first open up oh no uh name your price Okay, so I don't know how gold works in this world because, I mean, my regular salary is 5000 a year, right? But then I made a lot more doing FBK jobs. So, I mean, I would ask for more than the average on what I would get for an FBK job because, I, again, I don't know. I've ha I've ha I've gotten fifteen thousand. I've got one hundred fifty thousand for jobs. I've gotten <laughs> five. Like it's it can be anything. I, I would ask for like above 
what you usually would pay for a fire breathing um, kitten's adventure and for a favor. Got it. <laughs> so like 10,000 gold. Yeah. Rain's from a backwater village, kind of, where they trade. So she has like no concept of like monetary <laughs> value. And it like um, the the person who like kind of adopted her later on tried to teach it to her and she kind of understands it. But it's like if if you're like if you're like used to meter and trying to understand feet, that kind of thing, where it's like she kind of gets it a little bit, but not really. <laughs> so when Ava says ten thousand, you're like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's she's just like nodding and being like, mm-hmm, I know what we're talking about. <laughs> All right. Without batting an eye, this lady Zara Bayleaf responds. Go ahead and roll your parlay skill. Can I assist? Parley. Yeah, please do. This is offering an exchange of favors and laying out stakes. Um, and I, I did have like a favor along with the 10,000 as well that, that I wanted to ask for. And she can ask me that beforehand or after she agrees. Up to her. Uh, what is she agreeing to? Mm, basically to not do business with Blythe Horde until I say so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or if oh she has already to cut the deal with him. <laughs> And tell oh. and tell her and tell him it's because of Avarice Halavy. Halavy? Halavy. Oh, I thought that stood for Horde. No, no, it it stands for both. Oh, <laughs> but cute. she she's going by Halavy yeah. just to spite him. Wow. Because <laughs> that, that's why she usually goes by Avarice H. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> okay. All right. Your dad is Horde and your mom is Halavy. That's cute. Yep. Right. Um Yeah, so what'd you get on your parley roll? Um, let's see. Let's see if I got the assist. Uh, sadly not. I, I rolled a two oh. and a three and I have a zero in heart, so I only got a six. Uh, well, thankfully I rolled pretty well. I have, um, I rolled a four and a five and a one in heart, so that's a ten. On a ten plus. They'll take the deal or do what you want. Awesome. She accepts your deal. She reaches <laughs> out. She looks kind of like a milkweed. And she reaches out her hand to you. Her white hand with her dark green clothes. Light green skin, actually. Light green hand. <laughs> she shakes your hand, Ava. Um, all right. And then a- Ava kind of, like, scratches herself so that, like, a bit of her own devil's blood drips onto her <laughs> hand. Because she's making a deal. And I'm like, you got a deal. <laughs> she oh, just made a deal with the devil. <laughs> great. <laughs> Ava's like, this is what you use blood for. <laughs> exactly. <All right. laughs> Drinking it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you are on the job. You're going to get 10,000 gold. And Rick and his family will be safe, and her town can still exist, Sanguila, the tourist trap, if you get this monster. So, what's your plan for getting the monster? Mm, I'll turn to uh, Rain, and I'll, I'll say, so, Rain, as our as our friend who's, in, uh, who's very experienced at tracking monsters isn't here, do you, do you have any experience? I have some, but let's see, let's see what we're working with. Well, I mean, I have a very good nose. I did manage to find those dogs. Uh, hmm. That might help. Great. We can use that. And um, that thing that I didn't want to do f- for gold to uh, track that down, I can actually turn into a bird, a vulture, like my wings now. So perhaps Ooh. as a bird, I'll be able to see see more. Be able to... Yeah, from above town. Yeah, get a bird's eye view on things. <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> Mm. then yeah. I would start at the pet shop so we could return to the, or like I will return to the pet shop and see if I can uh, maybe pick up a scent there you pick up a scent it smells kind of like if you were to put it in an animal family category like a porcupine uh, <laughs> rain makes like a like an unhappy like expression like her her nose scrunches up a little bit and she's like oh, no <laughs> hey i got something i'll uh i'll try to follow it and hmm. she'd like sniff the air maybe be like on on, fo- on all fours on the floor if it's better there <laughs> and that would oh i guess that would be an investigate role then yeah right you can roll any move you want, scout, investigate, whatever you want. 
In Scout, it does say search for tracks. Yeah. Scout, search for tracks. So let's see, now that you have the scent, how good you are at following it. Roll Scout. Right. And, you know, I actually have a very low Scout score, but could I try to assist? I have a decent heart modifier. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Assist when you support or protect an ally. Explain how you're helping and roll 2d6 plus heart. Okay, I'm going to use a grit point because that was terrible again. Uh, okay, um, 6 plus 3 plus 1. That's a 10. Okay, so I, yeah, I, I rolled a 10. How are you helping? I am helping by, like, I'm going to turn into a vulture. And actually, wait, so may- maybe not, maybe I shouldn't do that yet. I'm going to be, like, pointing out, like, um, tracks that I see, pointing out, like, um, things like, okay, like, it should be around this big, considering that it broke in through the building, like, that that kind of that kind of stuff. All right. And on 10+, plus, they get plus two to their roll. Cool. Yeah. So what's your roll? Uh, I rolled a two and a four, and I have a three in dusk. So a two plus four is... Six plus three is nine, plus two from the assist is eleven. That means that on scout, on a ten plus, you can ask two, and you take plus one ongoing, which means that your next roll will be at plus one while you act on these answers. So go ahead and ask two scout questions. Um, okay. I guess since we're teaching people the game, I'll read the scout questions for the listeners. The scout questions are... How can we best end this quickly? What's our best way in or out? What here can I use to blank? What here is the most danger? What here is the biggest threat to us? What might happen if I blank? What was their goal or purpose? And where did they go? Um, I would flavor my scout roll in a way that Rain also looked at like the damage that was caused. Inst- mm-hmm. Like on the on the area and the patch up and stuff. Also looking at the at the like dead animals, um, because just following the scent wouldn't really answer these questions. <laughs> so, um, I guess the first question would be like, where did it go? Because that would be like the question with the scent. I would like I would like to find out the weakness, but I don't really see how looking at the destruction it caused would show me a weakness in any way. <laughs> right. What weakness can we exploit is an investigate question. So which two scout questions are you using? Where did they go? And which other one? Mm. Um, you can't think of one. You could always give your ally one, because I, I can think of one. Sure. Um, how can we best end this quickly? All right. Those are your two questions. Where did they go? Where did they go is into the fungus wheat fields around you. The tall grasses of the wheat look all gross and fungusy, but they are tall enough to hide... A significant creature. Sort of like the Great Plains dilemma, you know? Like, it could be anywhere around you. Have you seen Children of the Corn? Yeah. No, okay, have you been in a cornfield? It's tall. Yeah, it's tall, it's scary. Can't see stuff, even though it's ten feet away from you. That's where it went. How can we best end this quickly? That is a good question. I would say by killing it. (laughs) Yeah, but then we have to find it first. So, like, that using that question would help us find it, I'm assuming. Like, yeah, find, find where it is so we can kill it. I mean, I guess if it's in the cornfield and you turn into a vulture and look at it from above, you'll probably find it because there okay. shouldn't be wheat above it. But ah, okay. before we before we go there, um, if it's possible, I would like to go back to Rick because he seemed to, like, know what Sigrid was talking about. So if we could, like, see if he can, like, tell us more about this this monster, maybe we can use some of the investigate questions. Yeah, mm. you can. Okay, so before you scout the cornfields for crop signs, investigate. Go ahead and roll. I, I've got a plus one investigation. Okay, when you research lore, say what you want info on and roll 2d6 plus cents. And Rick is talking to you. His right. little child is drinking blood out of a blood bag, like one of those applesauce bags. <laughs> cute <laughs> or kind of morbid but also cute <laughs> okay in fact it's your blood rain <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope I'm tasty <laughs> I don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> somewhere Cameron is like narrowing his eyes 
Um. Oh wait, I still have the plus one, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that saves it because I had like because I I rolled a six and a two and I have a minus two in sense, so I had like exactly six and I was like, no, is there a way <laughs> to reach a seven? Uh, I would ask, what weakness can we exploit? Hmm. So you're you're with Rick. His kid's drinking a blood bag, and he says, "The histrocid." Yeah. Yep. Its belly lacks the quills that coat the rest of its body. Or so I've heard. I've never seen one. That's why I'm alive. Maybe we can throw it over. I, don't, I mean, I guess it's like really, yeah. <laughs> uh, really heavy and big, but. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I don't think we'll find out anything more. Because we already rolled the skill. <laughs> well, I mean, that's something. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we can use some prepare skills later on, like the watching, waiting and watching before we charge. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. And then I can also do, yeah, like I have something for wait and watch, but they have to, um, they have to be, they have to attack first. Yeah. I can inflict cursed on someone. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, okay. So, I mean... All right, well, now we know that its belly is soft, and maybe if we try to, if we can find a way to flip it over or get to its belly, that could help us. Uh, ready to do this thing? Yeah, I mean, it's probably not gonna, you know, just leave if we ask it nicely, so. All right, let's let's do oh, this thing. It? So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we know where it is, right? <laughs> yeah, we just have to... Located in the field. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so then, um, all right, as, as soon as we're, like, ready, as soon as we've gotten out of eyesight of anyone, probably into the cornfield, uh, is there anything you want to do, Rain, before that? <laughs> I'm just pondering, because it's a really high cornfield, right? If we go and fight it there, we're it's probably not corn. really... It's, it's fungus, fungus, decrepit wheat, but yeah. It's a, it's yeah. a really high fungus field. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... We're probably at a disadvantage if we just, like, go in there, because we might lose sight of it. What if we burn it? Bur burn I burn was, the wheat field because down. Because I was pondering. Wait, if it's it... diseased anyways. I, I, wait, I mean, I, I'm like a... I'm a devil. I can conjure fire, I guess, using, <laughs> using I weird. Mean, it, it would be nice if we make sure that the fire can't, like, burn <laughs> everything. Like, I don't want to start a forest fire. But it might be smart to just, like, burn, like, a section where the thing is. So that we can How actually about... fight it. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll say this in character. H How about we go around and just, like, um, get water or something, or, like, you know, just cut down all of the, all of, like, the, the, the wheat surrounding the, the, the town, kind of, you know? Um, or, like, could... at least surrounding that part of it. And then, uh, and then set the rest of it on fire. We could maybe dig a ditch or something, like, just around the field where we want just that might help <laughs> mm. and yeah, digging a ditch might take too too long unless are, are you really are you like really good at digging can you dig really quickly oh i mean malum if he if he grows in size he can he can dig pretty well i'm very bad at it but i mean are you good at it um with your you know special talents winks at her again <laughs> Because she she can she's kind of like figuring out <laughs> that rain is like a, a shifter can turn into wolves and she knows that dogs are good at digging. Rain does get like a little bit flustered every time you wink at her, but she's like trying not to let it show. Um, and she would like turn into a dog. It's like her her wolf form kind of bigger than a than a regular wolf, so because then she would probably be very quick at digging. <laughs> All right, you're digging a trench. How long yeah. do you spend doing it? It's about and, what time of day do you think it was? If it was ten o'clock when you met your dad, it should be like we we've been wandering around for a while. I guess a few hours have passed. It's like maybe one p.m. or oh, maybe it's noon. <laughs> How long do you spend digging a trench? <laughs> I mean, like Malum is very strong when he's in his full size. So I mean, as little time as possible. Um. To get as much as possible, I don't. I don't know if there's something we should roll for it, like iron or something. Uh, I would still maybe um, propose that 
you turn into a vulture, you fly up, and you locate the monster first, so that we don't dig a ditch around the whole field, but just like oh, yeah. around sort of like an area with a diameter, and hope it doesn't charge us. <laughs> Good idea. Okay, while Melum starts digging, um, starts making the ma- making the ditch, um, that's like in the nearest vicinity to, like I guess, the closest to the to the town, just so that it doesn't get it. Um, the fire doesn't get the town. Yeah, she's Ava's going to shift into a vulture and try to locate it from above. Okay, you sort of like crop signs. You see some yeah. pressed grass leading away from the back of the pet shop, uh, and veering over to the executive office oh so it's in in there yeah it's in the executive office then we Oops. don't need to burn <laughs> okay I, i'm gonna i'm gonna go back and tell her that so this monster <laughs> interestingly enough is actually in the executive office um so i guess we need to search there she's like narrowing her eyes she's like yeah there was someone in the executive office <laughs> Hmm. Okay, so d- does it okay, does it look like it broke through the walls? Mm-hmm. Yes, oh, okay. it looks like it broke through the wall into the building that contains the executive office. Cracked it like a coconut. Um, well, I'm going to uh, say all right, I'm going to I'm going to be right back. I just got to get someone to certain someone to actually, you know what? I think she can handle herself. She seems pretty powerful. Um, cuz I-, I was going to get the CEO out, but you know, I-, I feel like she can handle herself. All right. Well, I mean, we know where it is. It's we probably don't need fighting. To... Yeah, it's probably fighting the CEO. Maybe <laughs> right now, <laughs> the alarm on your face. Or, it, or it is the CEO. That was my first thought. But <laughs> if it broke through the wall, it probably isn't. <laughs> Unless yeah, we saw. Yeah, like, it wouldn't make wall. sense for her. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense for her to offer us a job to kill the thing if it was her. If it was her, she'd be like, cover it up. You know, like I don't know. She, she'd want a cover up story. Or maybe she's there. She would just have killed us, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, either way, I would like to go in and fight the thing. Anything you want to do before that? I mean, I don't think we'll get any more information about it. So. Yep. Let's let let's do it. Let's go on in, <laughs> fight it. <laughs> uh, when I shift um, back to the vulture form, I would have I would have told um, I'd have told that to Rain, and then I would be like, I would just shout like, Malham, and then Malham would stop digging a trench and then go the heck back where where I am still in his full size and then I'm just like well um now's the time to strike before it goes back out in the field and I'll just go in <laughs> where into the hole that it made into the hole that it made we've got one into the hole that it made anything else rain uh rain would stay in her in her wolf form and follow also through the hole <laughs> okay so Maybe she would, like, look into the hole before going in, <laughs> just to keep an opportunity to use the wait and watch. <laughs> okay, so we've got two people entering the hole, one of them looking, one of them maybe not looking, and you see... Uh, Coconuts. All, right. all correct. <laughs> okay. So, Olathe's player was the one who requested the puzzle, so I'm going to give you guys the puzzle, and then... but. Then we'll like so. This is us players breaking out of the game, and then we'll go back into the game later. But I just I do want to give you the puzzle. All right. So the uh, the door ha- you didn't go in the door, right? Nope. I went nope. through the hole. <laughs> but if you'd gone in the door, we're just kind of going to do the puzzle since we're here. The door has a voodoo style doll on the handle where a lock would be. A sign on the wall says which part of the body does not access the blood supply, because as requested. This adventure contains a puzzle, because the way into the blood storage is through this puzzle. Do you guys want to try to solve the puzzle? Since it's your game. <laughs> yeah. mm, I'm kind of... <laughs> this is yeah, not I, your I, players. I this is you guys. This is a puzzle for you. The door to the blood supply has a voodoo-style doll. Because if you just tried to go to the blood supply, right? Like, if you'd gone from the CEO's office there, or, like, just tried to go there, or, you know... I mean, you have a friend who's a vampire. I was like, maybe you'll just want to steal some blood. Who knows? So here's a puzzle for you guys. The door has a voodoo-style doll on the handle where a lock would be. A sign on the wall says which part of the body does not access the blood supply. Does it have toenails? (laughs) Or hair? Yeah, I was thinking hair, too. (laughs) Um, so, So you tap it on the toenail and you tap it on the hair. 
Those are technically correct. <laughs> those open the door. Teeth? Okay, well, it was going to be the cornea, but that's okay. So that's what the puzzle would have been. It's all good. Um, yeah, so you guys are in the back of the door, the back of the building, where it has cracked open the building like a coconut. Okay. The moment you step inside, a wave of cold, stinky air hits you. It smells heavy, humid, claggy, stench adhering to your inner nasal membranes. You can taste it. The overwhelming odor of blood. Lights flicker on, then off. They remain off. In that moment of illumination, you saw aisles of cold boxes, normally strong, sturdy, upright rectangles, overturned and ripped open, gashed as if torn apart with incredible force, blood pooling everywhere. And then since it's daytime, you also see the sleeping form of a bunch of spines, like a curled up porcupine. Hmm. If it was nighttime, it would have... This is kind of cool. I'll just read it. If you guys had entered the room at nighttime. Silhouetted against white pinpricks of stars, a spiky figure snuffles, and there's a clacking sound like beads clicking together, like bamboo canes striking off one another. Then scree! A wrenching sound as claws gut a cold box. But it is daytime, so you see a bunch of spines. Hmm. Okay, I feel like well, this is the adventure that never was. We've got all these alternatives that did not happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I think we should defend and dodge, maybe, for now. Should I describe how combat starts in Spectres and Spurs? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Skirmishes provide a light structure for fights breaking a typical narrative combat encounter into smaller pieces. During each skirmish, all involved combatants choose one of three tactics. Player characters openly. Then the tactics are resolved in order, with player characters generally acting before the non-player characters in each phase. The tactics are defend and dodge. That's number one, defend and dodge. Number two, advance and attack. And three, wait and watch. One, dodge. Two, attack. Three, watch. You're going to declare what you are choosing, and then you're going to roll 2d6. What do you guys think? You see a sleeping porcupine with super incredible bloodlust. I might have an idea that is outside of those options and is a shift okay. remove. Ooh, what's that? Um, Because I feel like I'm... I mean, I'm not sure how it translates, but, like, in my head, it's right now as if, like, a lion suddenly broke into, like, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so it's, like, <laughs> it's, like, causing havoc, but, like, it's not trying to. It's just an animal. So I feel kind of bad about just, like, offing it. So <laughs> I was pondering maybe we can, like, t I don't know, relocate it. <laughs> um, the thing is... Um, yeah, you can no work. Cage. Holy cow. Um, no cage can, like, hold it, probably, because it does tear metal. Yeah, I was I was gonna... Um, because I have a shifter move that is called Warging, which says you can possess animals to access new forms. While you hijack an animal, roll weird. The animal acts like a normal form, maybe with a unique benefit. On a 7 <gasps> to 9, choose one. On a miss, choose both. So if Holy I don't... Holy cow. <laughs> If I don't screw this up, I could basically <laughs> possess it for as long as I want because I don't have like a time limit on all of my other forms. And then we could try and find an expert <laughs> and like relocate it maybe <laughs> so we don't have mm -hmm. to kill it. <laughs> Wait, was wasn't killing it like what we what we did for the agreed for the job? Well, I mean, or was we, it just like or was it just like getting rid of it, like moving it some making it not be this we pro didn't this say village's it. problem? We didn't say kill. We said we would take care of the problem. <laughs> and we would keep the, okay. the, the town from being destroyed. I mean, worst case, we could take like a like a tooth and be like, oh yeah, we killed it. Because we're not <laughs> Faye. But she is, so... <laughs> we can lie. <laughs> okay, I mean, you, you could you could do that. I mean, I, I kind of want to do combat, but like... <laughs> I, I, I did a lot this session and I, I do want to do some RP with Blythe. So, I mean, we're going if, to if split you want, you this universe into two alternate realities. <laughs> Picture a mirror 
and you're looking into the mirror, and then the mirror becomes its own side world. So there's two worlds next to one another. And in one of the worlds, the working roll happens. Let's see that working roll. It's going to be faster to resolve. And in the other world, we're going to get combat. Because I, I would like to try combat in the system, because yeah. it just it looks fun. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I could always fail my my roll in the other one. Like, it could just be too, too far gone with how much blood it had. <laughs> um... I will spend one grit to re-roll one die that is a one. Oh, okay. That's a five and a six. <laughs> Plus my two weird. So that would be a, a 13. A 10 plus. Yeah, on a seven to nine, choose one. On a miss, choose both. You choose neither. You just possess this thing. And then you, I'm going to say that's the one for our long-term story, like in your next adventure, when people are like, Hey, Rain, what's up? You'd be like, I have a hystrocid. It's my pet. Sometimes <laughs> I command its body. I mean, it's only fair. Flex got a mech. So you have a hystrocid going forward. But Whoa. to test out your new toy, to see like what are its combat abilities, I it might kill you guys in this other... You know what? You're only two people and you're supposed to be three people just to let Ava's player know you're probably going to die. So let's see this combat. But it's that's okay if you die okay. here because yeah. in the real world... You have a pet hysterosid, and now let's see it rip you to pieces. Okay, so yeah, and, and I'm okay. With, like as long as I get to do my last stand, I, I'm cool with that. <laughs> and, and, then, and, and then, and yeah. then in the real in the real universe, I get to have a chat with my a real friendly chat with my with my dad. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, you can around just, the end of the session. <laughs> yeah, you can just come back from hell. All right. Yeah. Anyway, so let's let's do combat. But yeah, what really happened there is that you warged into it. That's so cool. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't have to kill it. <laughs> yeah, we got yeah, the right in, people in the real the in the real world. But then, but then we get to try it. We get to try out combat. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so we're going to system. do. What if you couldn't work this reality? Yeah. Like with with the like if you didn't spend that grit point and you stuck with the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, you still probably would have um would have succeeded because you got like a five or something. I don't know. Let's say you took a different skill instead of working, or you just got, you can only, you know, you just can't make it work long term. Everyone, declare, defend, or dodge. So we're just going to dodge, attack, yep. or watch. What are you declaring? Defend and dodge. Um, I would also like to defend and dodge with improvise. Okay, and it's asleep, so it doesn't get a move. So defend and dodge is up first. That's why they're numbered. One, two, and three. Defend and dodge. Uh... You guys can decide who goes first amongst you. Oh, wait, wrong. Um, no, never mind. Defend and dodge. <laughs> um, I would try to use improvise to manipulate mm -hmm. the environment. So spend one grit to manipulate the environment to gain or inflict a condition. How many grit do you have left? Three. Okay. I mean, in this universe, I still have four because I didn't work <laughs> that's true <laughs> yeah yeah you, you have four in this universe <laughs> multiverse yep. theory let's go <laughs> so i would <laughs> would have tried to flip it over and the condition would have been flipped <laughs> i guess so that we could attack its belly stunned yeah or hindered hindered because it's on its back yes go ahead and roll to improvise to spend a grit to manipulate the environment to gain or inflict a condition so what are you in manipulating in the environment to flip this massive creature onto its belly to hinder it? Which would mean it can use one fewer skill. I was pondering to like try and do like a leverage thing where I like try and use one of the cold boxes to kind of like push down on one end and it would like seesaw the other end. <laughs> yeah, maybe you jump upon the ripped off door that it's laying on, which flips it like a pancake. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Go ahead and roll. Um, I rolled a six and a two, and that is a dusk roll, so that's a six, a two, and a three. That's a ten that's plus. A you get to 11. do... Yeah, yeah. You get to choose two of them, so you can improvise and do one more. It can oh. be either dive for cover or retaliate, or it can be a playbook skill from the basic moves or your character sheet shifter. I would say retaliate. Each enemy who deals you damage or a condition this skirmish loses one grit. <laughs> Noted. All right. Ava's turn. You're also on defend and dodge. What's your role first? So we'll see how many moves you get to use. 
I rolled a uh, six and a three, and I have minus one in dusk, so that will be a total of eight. All right. On a seven to nine, choose one. Do you dive for cover, improvise, or retaliate? Mm, I'm going to dive for dive for cover, and I'm not going to spend the grit to become guarded because I only have two left. Okay, you gain plus one armor. Yeah. The Histrosid didn't act this skirmish because it was asleep. So what happened was it doesn't attack Rain, so she doesn't have to uh, use the Retaliate, and it doesn't attack Ava, so you don't have to use your armor with your die for cover, and it becomes hindered. NPCs choose one fewer skill to use next skirmish because it is flipped on its back with its belly in the air. So it's going to use its skill. It would have, so if you're monsters, what that means is that you took away one of its attacks. It's going to use that time to flip itself back over on its turn. NPCs generally go after player characters. So we're going again. Next skirmish. You guys choose if you're defending and dodging, advancing and attacking, or waiting and watching. It's currently on its back. It's going to use one of its actions to flip itself back over, which means it's not going to do one of its attacks. I have named its attacks. They're fun. We'll get there. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> I mean, you guys are going to die. <laughs> but <they're> uh, <laughs> so so fun. Does, you're dying. Does... It's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> if you had three people, you wouldn't die. But I designed knife edge combats. So with two people, you'll go and die. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, so question. Can Does armor stack? Like, um, if, if I if I got a plus one and then I get another plus one, would I get a plus two? I'm going to go yes, because it's kind of, it's sort of like a plus one forward would stack, right? Like, or does that okay. stack? I don't know. Did I just make two mistakes in a row? Does that cancel out? Um, <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> it seems like, I'm picturing it like a, a counter that you can possess, like the little slips of paper from earlier. Yeah. In this game, hey, you know how in the very, when I first started this, I said I'd make mistakes? Ready? Mm -hmm. In this game, it stacks. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, in that case, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to defend and dodge again. I'm going to die for cover again. All right. I'm going to control F the rule book because I just remembered I can do that. <laughs> nah, I'm not. Just go with it. Go move forward. Okay. Yeah, you guys need all the help you can get. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking. Uh, all right. Player characters, defend or er, declare your tactic. Yep. Defend and dodge. Defend and dodge. Okay, and? Advance and attack. <laughs> Advance and attack. So, defend and dodge happens first. Go ahead and... What's your number? My number is a nine, because I rolled a six and a four. Minus one. Okay. Would you like to do one of the defend and dodge abilities? Yes, I'm going to die for cover again, so I get a plus one armor. <laughs> yes. So I have two armor now, so if it damages me, I take two less damage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'd like to know how many feet you are away from the Histrosid. Are you leaving the building? No. Or are you inside the room? No, definitely inside the room, just like, I guess, hiding behind something or like, or like splashing blood in another direction. So it goes there or like, I don't know, like, yeah, yeah, actually, I would be kind of turtling myself with my, with, with my, with my wings kind of, yeah, actually I can control them tele telekinetically. So that would be like spreading my feathers out a bit, making it a bit harder for it to move around. Ah, all right. In this room full of cold boxes with its humid, cold air and blood like that you can taste. It's so thick. That's what's happening. Next up is number two, advance and attack. What's your number? So this is when, if you advance in melee or open fire, roll plus iron. On a seven to nine, choose one of the following. On a 10 plus, choose two, choose two, or one of the following and one playbook skill. What do you do, Rain? Um, I rolled a six on the one. Uh, these dice love me today. <laughs> I'm scared of the next session because then they will constantly fumble. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and I have a two and iron, so that's a nine. On a nine, choose one. Do you apply pressure? Do you rip and tear? Or do you shoot and strike? I shoot and strike. I am still in my fanged form, um, which says you can become a powerful bear or wolf, gaining plus one armor and a three damage bite. So I would y utilize my three damage bite on it as... Soft, exposed, spineless belly or quidless. <laughs> that actually does a lot of damage. You would say that normally it has a lot of armor, and this this is quite a significant damage to it. It screams in pain, squirms, flip it, flips itself over, and then it's going to do its attack now. It because it used a flip, you know, it's only going to do one of its attacks. It normally would do two. 
this attack is called pinwheel. It's going to oh, no. spin around like a pinwheel, which will cause slicing damage. This is two damage to anyone in close range. Now, Ava has armor. You have two armor. Mm-hmm. So it gets, I'm going to say gets consumed, right? Yeah. Because otherwise you'll just be perpetually immune to damage or armor doesn't stack or I don't know. It's a good question. Listeners, you can look it up and play your own Spectres and Spurs game. But I'm going to say it gets consumed. Does that make sense? It, no. it gets it gets used, yeah. It does? Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Make, makes sense to I me. Don't know. Otherwise, you will just, right? If you can stack 10 armor, you'll just <laughs> forever. Okay, I got to look it up now. We got to get the rule book at this point. Does armor stack? I mean, does in it the form, it also says plus one armor, and I feel like it would be weird if that was consumed because then you would have to like turn back and then turn back again to get it back i mean it could be that like the fur gets cut off or whatever and then your armor is gone but there is something like called armor piercing and i'm assuming that would be like damage that ignores armor so maybe armor is something you just have yeah and and then if if they deal more damage than your armor then you get damaged but if if they don't spend grit to pierce armor okay guarded says it's Plus one armor against the next attack. So guarded armor does get consumed. Okay. Okay. Because against the next attack means that it goes away. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Yep. So for this particular condition of guarded... Oh, actually, I I, I didn't use guarded. Right, because I didn't spend the grit to become guarded. So it's just gain plus one armor this this skirmish. Okay. Well, then that went away when the skirmish ended, which was when the creature woke up and you... Each round is a skirmish. Oh. I see. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. All Sounds right. good. We're figuring out these rules. So you have one armor and it lasts all skirmish. Mm-hmm. Which is until you pick another thing to do. Defend, attack, watch. Okay. So that means that it dealt two damage to anyone in close range, but only one damage to Ava because she had armor. Got it. I mean, the fang, the fang form does have one armor with the three damage bite. But I guess that one doesn't get consumed because it's like a skill that you have to buy with skill points, maybe. As long as you're in your fanged form, yeah, you have one armor. So you both take one damage. How much luck do you have left? Five. Uh, six. All right. And that is the end of this skirmish. We are on to the next skirmish. Player characters, openly choose one of the three tactics. Defend and dodge, advance and attack, and wait and watch. What do you choose? Advance and attack. Wait and watch. All right, we've got one advance and attack. That's number two in the priority list. What's your roll? It's plus iron. My roll is a, th- a five and a three plus two. That's a ten. Ten on advance and attack. Dang, a ten plus. Choose two. Do you apply pressure, rip and tear, shoot and strike? You can choose two of those. I would also like to use a shifter skill that's called mutated. Which is called, uh, which does spend one grit to temporarily manifest devastating claws or spikes, dealing two damage to an enemy in melee range and inflicting hindered. Nice. That's one of your two skills that you're choosing, the playbook skill and one from the list below. What's the one from the advance and attack list that you're doing? Um, I suppose I would shoot and strike again. Noted. So you deal your weapon damage to an enemy in range with shoot and, shoot and strike. So total up all of the attack power that you have and what's your total and describe what it looks like. Rain would kind of like her her fangs and like her claws would kind of like mutate and grow and become more like powerful. And she would like charge at the pinwheel from the side and kind of like to like try to like thrust her claws into it kind of like and try to throw it over which would be the hindered condition and kind of like throw it back to the ground again and then um do that three damage bite where i guess her her claws and 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 fangs have like shrunk again because they're no longer like mutated nice so you deal two damage from mutate and how much from your weapon damage uh three so that's five damage yes Wow. All right. So it doesn't currently have hindered. You're inflicting hindered on it. And you'll notice that as it pinwheels, your claws hit the spines, the needles, the hollow quills that are coming off of this thing. They, some of them break, 
and they fly off in fragments at you. You cover your eyes, but you're Ow. okay. You're not blinded. It doesn't do any I damage mean, to you. But what happens is that it has armor mechanically. So only three damage will deal one to it, if that makes sense. It has two mm-hmm. armor. So you did five damage, so it took three. I mean, one eye is blind, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not this guy's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, and then with your mutate, your huge claws, uh, flip it over, and it is once again on its belly, or on its back, exposing its belly. That was great. Now we're on skirmish move three, the tactic of wait and watch. Ava, what did you roll? So um, I'm using plus heart or plus sense. I'll say plus sense. Uh, I, I rolled a total of 12. I rolled a six and a five. Nice. On a 10 plus, you choose two, one of the below and one playbook skill. So um, I would like to, so for, I'm going to choose one of these skills and one playbook skill. And for this skill, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to choose booster burden and I'm going to, going to help um, Rain. I'm going to give you the, uh, the, the blessed condition. So you get to choose an additional skill next to skirmish, even on a miss. And like, Thematically, the way that I'm doing that is you now have um, Malum helping you attack or do whatever you want to do. So you now have like two bodies. Like, yeah, one of my dragons goes to help you. Um, and then for my skill, I'm going to inflict cursed on anyone who attacked you, the skirmish. Yeah. They may spend one grit to resist. So I'd like to curse the creature and bless Rain. Nice. The NPC will deal less damage next time because it is yep. cursed Noted. and it takes minus one to all rolls yeah and yeah that's what i'm doing yeah you just have like a rain you just have this like um this beautiful stained glass dragon going and standing next to you and it like kind of its glass heckles raised and it's growling at this creature it might um help her like mentally and be like oh yeah it's pack time <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty cool then the hister said uh Flips itself over again because um, it's its turn, right? So wait, mm-hmm. does, guess. It, does it flip itself over the moment that you, because you flipped it this turn onto its back. Hmm, how does that work? If it's flipped next round, it doesn't flip itself over this time. All right, I'm going to say that next turn is flipped over so that you get the chance to do something about it because you just did it this turn, right? So you didn't get a chance to attack it. Well, okay, yeah. So it'll act normally this time and it'll be left with the condition ongoing okay so it's going to act normally this time it's going to both pinwheel and needle suction you finally get to see the cool monster ability so first it pinwheels both of you take one damage because after your armor you only take one damage or oh ava doesn't have any armor this time nope i do not so she takes two damage what luck are you guys at three (laughs) five okay i'm gonna randomly roll Evens, rain, odds, Ava. That's an even. So then it needles suctions, which is only three damage because of Ava's curse. But that's only three damage to rain as it, very unlike a porcupine, maneuvers its quills and it's stabbing you and sucking the blood out of you. Take three damage, rain. Is the armor already in that calculation? No. Does the armor count? You calculate your armor. Yeah, yeah, okay. that counts. So you're okay, taking good. less. Yeah. Then I am at three luck. Okay. All right, so you're both at three? Uh, yep. <laughs> All right. Um, I have bad news for you guys. With only two players, you are 100% guaranteed to not survive this next skirmish. <sighs> so let's go, guys. What do you do? <laughs> skirmish <laughs> moves. Do you defend and dodge, advance and attack, or wait and watch? Let's advance and attack. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's do as much damage as we can. (laughs) See if we can kill it. Yep, it's on its back because, you know, I should let you guys benefit from the condition that you apply to it. Yeah. Maybe as a a stab drain, she managed to flip it over again. Yeah. (laughs) Also, cursed is permanent, I think, because it doesn't say, it says take minus one to all rolls, and NPCs deal minus one damage. It's not, it doesn't say for this skirmish or I guess the next attack. All right, it's cursed. Oh, yes, I should roll. So what are you choosing to do? What skirmish move do you choose? Advance Advance and attack. attack. Yeah. Okay. 
Who would like to go first? Uh, I could, since I since I rolled. Um, all right, I spent a grit to reroll and get a good number here. So I rolled six plus three plus two. That's a total of eleven. Choose two. Hmm. Uh, I would like to first of all shoot and strike. Um, deal your weapon damage to an enemy in range. It's one damage close, and it pierces armor because armor piercing does curse damage. It's on its back, so its belly is exposed. It doesn't have armor on its belly. Yeah, exactly. And then I guess I'll... Uh... So, question. So there's the apply pressure, suppressor, intimidate an enemy, choose a tactic they can't use next skirmish. Uh, what, is a ta- what would a tactic be? Like, what's something that I could say they can't do next skirmish? Defend and dodge, advance and attack, and wait and watch our tactics. But um, this is an NPC, so they don't quite act like that. Okay, because, like, apply pressure is suppress or intimidate an enemy, choose a tactic they can't use next skirmish. So could I say that they can't attack next skirmish? Mm. Is it attacking a tactic? Mm. During each skirmish, all involved combatants choose one of three tactics, NPCs secretly, PCs openly, then tactics are resolved in order with PCs generally acting before NPCs in each phase. Okay, so what I was doing each time was advance and attack. Ah, so I should have specified that I was advancing and attacking. I see. So, and then that would be the tactic right. they can't use, so they can't advance and attack next round. They have to do the, one of the other things. Mm, that, w- that would, okay. I think, make sense mechanically. All right. And what was your skill that inflicted this? Apply pressure. Apply pressure, suppress, or intimidate an enemy. Choose a tactic they can't choose next skirmish. Okay. So that is advance and attack. Okay. So I think I found, like, a fatal flaw in Spectres and Spurs. Mm-hmm. There's more player characters than there are non-player characters, right? There's always going to be fewer enemies, like in a big in a big bad fight, right? Like there's one big bad. And so if you guys, just saying this, if you guys each tried advancing and attacking and at least one person was applying pressure every round, then that means the monster could never fight the party. Because mechanically, what you've just pointed out is that the apply pressure, suppress or intimidate an enemy, choose one tactic they can't use next skirmish. If only one of the three party members applies pressure each round, the monster can never attack you. (laughs) Your game's broke. (laughs) Oops. Okay, they could also retaliate when they do that, so then you lose, you automatically um, lose one grit. Yeah, but that's not health. (laughs) Yeah, they could also trigger a basic rather like yeah, like they would be unable to attack or deal damage. That's that's true, but they could do other things. You found the solution to specters and spurs. <laughs> yep, you pretty solved much. the puzzle. <laughs> you know, I promised a puzzle in this adventure. You solved it. <laughs> <laughs> you have beaten specters and spurs. Yes, if one of you, correct Ava, if one of you <laughs> applies pressure each round, it can never attack you again. <laughs> Yeah, or, like, it can prevent you... Okay, the thing is, it can prevent you from doing that next round and then attack you next round. So it can... Yeah, like, it can't apply pressure, but it could do a condition. Like, it, it, can, yeah. it can still do things, and then it can no. get out of that condition, and then... No, it can't. So I guess we're going to do a little speed run. You have prevented it from advancing and attacking. Yes. Now it's its turn, right? Or no, you went first. Okay, so yeah. now, Rain, go. Uh, you're... Your really, really, really useful party member has just prevented the enemy from attacking this round. <laughs> I, I would, okay, like, um, thematically, it would be pinning it, to, like, it would be, like, shooting out all my feathers and just pinning it to the ground. Yeah, and that's next skirmish, so it can it can do something this skirmish, but yeah, it's yeah. screwed next next skirmish. So, Rain, what are you doing? You're advancing and attacking, you said? Can I shoot and strike, like, twice? Ro- what's your dice? Roll plus iron. Oh, never mind. Uh, yeah, because you, you get the additional skill. <laughs> so yep, you can. So you like um, whatever you roll, you get plus one even if if you miss. Like you can use, you can do any number of whatever skill you choose. Uh, I'm gonna spend a grit. I have two left then, bec- to re-roll a one. Mm-hmm. And then I have ten as the final result. Okay, so you get three total, right? From Ava giving you an extra, because you're blessed. Choose an additional skill next skirmish. So you get two from your 10 plus and one from Ava. So what do you do? Can I choose a thing like three times? (laughs) Yep. Then I would just shoot and strike three times? Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Deal your weapon damage to an enemy in range. 
Oh, wait, I don't have to spend grid because it's on the spelly, right? Uh, on it its is. back. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then I will just do three damage three times. <laughs> And just to point out to you guys from the monster uh, build guide, which is on the two GM pages, it says the most luck or hit points a monster can possibly have is 13, and you dealt how much that t- that turn? Nine. <laughs> Nine. It dead. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> we defied the odds. <laughs> yeah, no, here, really here, you said, here you said, like, there's no way that you could, that you could win. <laughs> It's like, there really wasn't. <laughs> I, I following the GM guides, it gives me a range, right, of how much health I can right give the enemy. I gave it the maximum. It had two armor. It had one weakness. The belly doesn't have armor. Belly makes it not have armor anymore. It had four grit and thirteen luck and two attacks, dealing two to four damage. So dang guys, yeah, against a properly statted specters and spurs, you not only defeated the enemy, but Ava figured out how to defeat every enemy forever. Ever. <laughs> yeah, if if you if you okay, only if like you have a GM who loves killing their players. And um secondly, if there is like not more than one monster, and if there's not more than one monster in an encounter. Because you I imagine the system you could probably encounter more than one, and then like before your luck would have vanished, and then you know, like, you're going to have a monster that's going to attack you, and then you can lose more luck. So I guess it's more of a system that's designed to not be, like, a one monster only kind of system, but, like... Yeah, except uh, the section yeah. that I took the monster stats from said, for a big monster, the adventure is designed around to use these oh, stats. Yeah. So apart from that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess, yeah, you, you'd, yeah if, if, if you want, if you want to kill your players, put more monsters than just one, even though it recommends you... Uh, <laughs> Well, not that I wanted to kill you guys, but um, <laughs> I did want a combat. But all right, da, 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 da. in this universe, you've murdered it, <laughs> and when it dies, all of its quills start oozing blood. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> gross. Well, I mean, <laughs> it says before stopping recording, make sure that they've gotten all of these epilogues. Did you ice- ask Blythe about his work? Yes, you did, Ava. Good job. Did you visit the executive offices? Yes, you did, Olathe. Good job. And did you ask Rick how he became a vampire? Yes, you did. Good job, everybody. Yay. So, do you guys have anything else you'd like to do before you get paid 10,000 gold for this adventure? Hmm. I, I suppose, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Blythe uh, another another time that will be something that my character will do so look for it in an upcoming episode it's going to be a very very nice um, father daughter chat <laughs> yes because you found out that he's on to you he knows that you've saved his life and he thinks of you as his golden child now because you're secretly saving his life even though you hate his guts and he's yeah. deadbeat dead and you dropped <laughs> off at an orphanage yep what happened behind the scenes there was what's his name Rickenbach Yep, D- Dieter von Rickenbach. <laughs> Dieter von Rickenbach, who's always following your dad around, noticed that you also were always following your dad around and that you had saved his life several times. And so your dad thinks of you as his favorite daughter openly now. And he's probably being a lot less careful about what he's doing, not knowing knowing that he's got someone looking out for him who's makes sure that he stays alive. <laughs> and he put you in his will, as you're the person who inherits everything from him. And he put me in his will. And he's got... Uh, Horde Holdings, which is a lot. Uh, it, it contains considerable shares in Consent Creamery, a company that we know lasts to thousands of years from now. <laughs> okay. Rain, thoughts on the adventure? Anything you'd like to wrap up after you receive 5,000 gold? Because <laughs> it was 10 total. Well, she'll probably have to like find out more information about Histrocytes. <laughs> How to feed them. <laughs> Uh, maybe, oh my gosh. maybe Cameron can help with his like blood beets and crops. <laughs> I-, I can also help out. I- I've got I've got a pretty good source of blood if if you want it. <laughs> I mean, she wouldn't say no. <laughs> um, it's, it's very evil. And suddenly, the jail in Duncan Town also becomes a blood donation center. Yeah. <laughs> It's good for you. The body regenerates blood. They did that in the, in the medieval times. It's fine. It's bloodletting. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she might also try to like help with growing the crops because she's got to feed this big animal <laughs> that would otherwise 
probably wreck a town. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else before we sign off? Mm. Oh, yeah. We miss you, Olathe. We love you. Don't worry about it. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> oh, well. All right. Anything else? Anybody? Mm. All right. Joining us today were Ava. How to yell and farewell. This town's pretty strange, but I know a couple strange towns. And Rain. Time to get some blood from my porcupine. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Have you heard of You Betcha She Did? This is a podcast where female entrepreneurs and women who have paved the way share their wit, wisdom, and a few laughs. Hosted by Reina Rokiki, a former international teacher turned podcast and YouTube producer, her interview style show features a different woman entrepreneur or fearless female who has paved the way. With a desire to lift more women up in this world and share their stories, successes, and challenges, Reina hopes to inspire others to reach for more. Tune in to new episodes each Tuesday. Check out You Betcha She Did, a podcast.